the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Isaiah chapter 2. The same prophecy was given to prophet Micah but I like Isaiah's rendition and the word of the Lord let me start from verse 1 came to Isaiah the son of Amos what he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem 2 says and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and nations shall flow unto it verse 3 says and many people say many people many people shall go and say come let us go up to the mountain of the lord to the house of the god of jacob and he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths for out of zion shall go forth the law and the word of the lord from jerusalem hallelujah it is important for us as believers please you can drop your bible now and listen it is important as believers to understand that there is a territorial dimension to kingdom advance kingdom advance generally speaks of extending the influence the reign and the influence of the christ when prophet isaiah received the messianic prophecy that would talk about jesus it was said in that prophecy that of the increase of his government and his peace there will be no end that means of the continual advancement and expansion of Christ his purposes and the peace that comes in that kingdom there will be no end so this is a kingdom that grows please understand this he says I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail i know that looking at society right now it looks like the church is not growing it looks like the purposes of christ is not advancing but i want you to know that the church is growing and the purposes of christ is advancing the bible declares that it is god's desire that the lordship of christ be established first in the hearts of men please say the hearts of men one more time say the hearts of men and then number two across territories so kingdom advance is twofold the establishment of the lordship of christ first in the hearts of men the purposes of christ must be established in the hearts of men then number two it must be it must be frontiered across territories that means it is not enough that individuals be saved it is not enough that individuals come under the governing influence of the christ it is time to start taking cities cities the bible says these are they the book of acts that have turned the world upside down the story of revival as we read first from scripture and then through modern history talks about men and women according to hebrews 11 the bible says they subdued kingdoms everybody says subdued kingdoms i'm teaching us this dimension because i was so touched dealing with the teachings that i had with um, cgc and then it, i was reminded again that it is not enough for us to just win souls in terms of individuals it is time for us to obtain grace from god to start taking cities he says ask of me of the hidden i will give them to you for your inheritance hallelujah praise the lord 
it is time for us to take systems structures nations and bring them under the lordship of the christ this is one of the ways that the kingdom will advance now look up i gave an analogy in the morning while teaching during the church service uh, of cgc and i told them that you may not have seen the founders of nokia or um blackberry or whatever it is your apple products but they have so done something to the territory that if your phone gets missing lost or spoiled you remain restless until another one comes they have forced the necessity of that product in your life you no matter how conservative you are when you lose your phone you don't just keep quiet you will say glory be to god but you will do something about it they have they have they have indoctrinated a generation into believing that without a phone a gadget like this your life is incomplete now that's powerful because that's exactly how the kingdom was supposed to become institutional that a day must come in the life of a city when if there is no service in a day people will say what is wrong not just on sundays alone not just on mondays alone they gather daily in the early church that a day will come where it should not be that there is no christian within a territory it should not be that god is void of men and women who can advance his purposes within a territory kingdom advance is territorial that means that we are not entirely free until our territory is free i repeat we are not entirely free until our territory is free i can enjoy the freedom that comes with a new life as an individual but i am still in bondage because if the territory has not come under the lordship of the christ i can be affected listen to me i can be affected by the value system that is predominant within a territory even though i have been exempted by my new birth experience such is the case that we experience here in the north such is the case that we experience in africa i give you an instance i am not a corrupt person you are not a corrupt person but we are victims of the consequences of corruption for instance why because we are immersed in a territory that still holds corruption as a value system so we are not entirely free listen this message is aimed at correcting the mistake that esther was about to make hallelujah her man was conniving with the king and attempting to manipulate and influence him to bring the people of god under servitude and bondage to pass a law that will fight and annihilate the jews are we together esther is in the palace as the privileged wife of ahasuerus having the opportunity to influence the program of god she was comfortable i hope you know that as the first lady of a king who was lord over 127 provinces a province is what will be equivalent to a continent a province is not a local government a province is not it will be the equivalent of what we call a continent today and so literally he was like the lord of the then world 127 provinces and here's a woman with the power and the influence to see that the purposes of god are preserved but because of the beauty and the security that came with the palace she ignored mordecai and mordecai sent a warning and said do not think when they finish with us when they find out you are a jew in other words although you are free in the palace you are not free in the nation are we together now esther's advocacy the entire book of esther was not about esther trying to protect herself she was already free remember she was the king's wife the same way you are already free as the bride of christ but the territory is in trouble there is a mordecai somewhere manipulating the government and the in the the positions of influence to antagonize the program of god and the holy spirit stands as our mordecai and he's speaking to the esther of the king and saying do not be comfortable just because you can buy a car just because you can eat 
just because you are happy just because things are well with you just because your church looks like it's doing well if the kingdom the program of god the territory is not captured to come under the influence of christ it means one day what you call liberty will not be liberty indeed hallelujah praise the lord god is a god who is territorial in context he deals with people he deals with things territorially I have heard of stories where flourishing churches, flourishing nations were locked down in a moment because another Pharaoh arose who did not know Joseph. When I was studying, preparing for this, I studied and it surprised me to find out that North Korea was once a center of revival on earth. Can you imagine that? North Korea that once upon a time there was an outpouring of the spirit china was once a place of massive revival the hand of god was strong upon that europe you study the story of people like john knox and the rest mighty men of and women of god john knox who took over scotland through the power of prayer and intercession and right now some of these places have become monuments to the palestine many of the apostolic activity of paul happened within rome palestine and all of those those nations and today you can hardly find anything that represents the purposes of god do you know why because the individuals were free but the territory was not free daniel was free as a person he had been exalted to be one of the kings inner circle but the program of god in babylon was still in bondage and all of a sudden darius i mean uh, nebuchadnezzar decides to build a 90 feet statue of gold and says when you hear the trumpet when you hear all of these things bow down to it three hebrew boys came out to stand and be different they wanted to be different but they had to pay the price for fighting the mindset of a territory Listen, please hear me. You are not free when your territory does not call upon your God. The nation of Israel were in Egypt to receive succor because there was no bread, there was no wine, food had finished. But because Joseph was there in power and Pharaoh had committed the entire governance of Egypt unto him, the purposes of God could thrive. Listen carefully. The purposes of God could advance under the watch and under the leadership of Joseph. But Egypt did not yet belong to God in terms of territorial alliance. So when the man who was the advocate of God's program died, another Pharaoh arose. And when that Pharaoh arose, he changed his policy look how easy it is to bring the purposes of god to jeopardy one man can just arise who does not believe in your conviction and that's the end of it we are not free until our territory is free dominion must be territorial is god speaking to us commanding influence and dominion over a territory is a dimension of the gospel that has largely not been understood please look up let me have your attention we have done well in terms of evangelism please come one-on-one -on -one evangelism we have done well in terms of printing tracts excellent we have done well in terms of putting jesus film and going to you know community projects bible translation activities we have done exceptionally well that is commendable except for the fact that it seems as though our lopsided understanding of the gospel and kingdom advance if we do not correct and balance it there will be a serious problem do you know this is the problem today in the west an average elderly person in america is born again an average elderly person in america is born again calls upon the name of the lord jesus but an average young person in america is far he's not even close to the gate of the kingdom what happened once upon a time 
America did not just believe in Jesus alone. They dedicated their territory. They said, in God we trust. As a, as a territorial, that means God. Anywhere you see within the circumference of America, it is dedicated as the space for your influence. God is a God of territory. What did he give to Abraham? Not just the blessing, he gave him access to territory. God is always territorial. He wants territories to be captured for him. And this is a dimension of kingdom advance that people have gotten wrong. Please look up. When we talk about, um, there is a concept that is used, especially in the Pentecostal circle. It's called takeover. And it's a concept that came from the revelation of scripture. That a time will come the mountain of the Lord's house. That a time will come the world will bring influence. And, and I believe that. But there is a dimension of our takeover concept that is wrong. For many of us, our concept of takeover means one day Nigeria will be like Dubai. One day um, Haiti will be like Europe. Um, I don't think it's going to happen. Not at this side of God's program. So the idea of takeover is not just in terms of infrastructural development. No. Remember that territory is about people. People. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell in them. So uh, the idea is not an advocacy to make Nigeria become like Dubai one day. It's a wonderful project if it ever happens. Are we together? But the idea is to see that the ideology of a territory. Now this is where we're talking about. So when we're talking about territorial dominion we're not looking at it from a carnal fleshly standpoint although there is a socio-economic implication but primarily we're talking of the church ascending to a point where the church is in charge of the mind control systems write it down the mind control systems across every territory this is how dominion happens when the mind control systems that means the instruments that are used to shape the paradigm, the understanding and the perception of people within a territory comes under the influence of the church. That is dominion. Everyone please say mind control systems. One more time, shout it. Say mind control systems. So when we talk about territorial dominion, the idea is not to drive Muslims, drive traditionalists from a territory in that the only people here are just Christians. That's not the idea because the same Lord is rich unto all. Are we together now? It was the mistake that Alexander Way wanted to make because of his passion to see this territorial take over the idea was to drive every non-christian out of a region and he tried to do it and he came up with a city called zion city right it was a city that would become a prototype of his idea that means a city that was entirely built upon righteousness where there was nothing that represented darkness there and i understand that but this is not exactly the concept until Jesus comes, there will still be sinners on earth. Until Jesus comes, there will still be non-Christians on earth. The same Lord sends rain upon the godly and the ungodly. Are we blessed? Very powerful concept. Your Christianity in terms of kingdom advance will be very meaningless if you don't understand this. This is the reason behind the frustration of many Christians who are now born again, now filled with the Holy Spirit, and then they tend to ask what more. Because the advocacy, the proposition that was given to them at their new birth experience was that they should prepare for heaven. And that is wonderful. And now this guy realizes that he has 90 more years to live. How many years? So let's assume that this guy is 35. 90 plus 35. This is a long time to live not knowing what you are doing. Are we together? Yes. 
So many people are frustrated because the ritual of going to church on Sunday, then midweek prayer on Wednesday, then maybe a prayer meeting on Friday, then another fellowship, and then the ritual continues. Then once in a while, a conference comes. Then once in a while, a revival program comes. Then marriage is added to it. Then children added to it. Then old age is added to it. It finally ends up in the grave. It's not a wise way of living. An intelligent God would not design that system of living. There is enough to occupy you to make your life worthwhile that you check the time and say, my God, can you imagine 20 years is gone right now? I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. The Bible says the harvest is wide, but the laborers are few. Let me add, not to add to scripture, but I think the laborers are also foolish. They are not just few. There, there is need to trust God for an impartation. He says wisdom is profitable to direct. It's already an emergency that the laborers are few. And then if the laborers that are there are not wise, operating by the wisdom of heaven, then we'll be in trouble. If you do not love this message, you are selfish. Because it means you are not thinking about your children. May God forbid it that it will be in our lifetime. Pharaohs will arise from our territory that will hijack this place. That our children will be sent to servitude. Do you know, let me tell you, God forbid. But if a crisis breaks out in Africa, right? Or Nigeria. Most of our parents who are already close to their grave. It's just to push them and they're in. They're already close there. You, you get what I'm saying? Believers are very careless sets of people. We always think darkness is so far until our carelessness allows it to come near. To come near to a point that our children will no longer have the... Who would have believed that the Ten Commandments will be removed today in schools? Look up, please. Who will have believed? We are not talking of Saudi Arabia. We are not talking of North Korea. Are we together? We are not talking of the Gulf nations. We are talking of a nation that has stood to herald the gospel for decades. And right now, individuals within a parliament would sign and say, get this thing out. You discipline your child, you are going to court. That means you flog the child, behave well, be a good disciple of Jesus. Straight, someone is punishing you for violating the fundamental right of that child. Are we together? I know a great man, a very wealthy man whose son was in the U.S. When he clocked 18 and he came back, the mother shouted. He told her, stop that, I am 18. The mother beat nonsense out of him. <laughs> now, it's not an advocacy for violence and child abuse. Please, don't misunderstand me. I'm speaking to nations. There are people following us from around the world. But the idea is that most people think your personal salvation means territorial salvation. No. There is personal salvation. I am saved. But there is territorial salvation. I am safe. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem, not the peace of the prayer warrior. The prayer warrior is already free, but Jerusalem is in trouble. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. He said, they shall prosper that love thee. Hallelujah. I thank God for the profound mentorship of Dr. Miles Monroe in and to my life. We continue to be the fruits of his apostleship, advocating a balanced understanding of kingdom advance. The evangelical has done well. We respect and we honor and we continue to bless them. I came out of the evangelical circles, but the imbalance of advocating personal salvation alone as the ultimate key to taking over territories is an error. 
An individual salvation is important, but we must understand the principles that bring Christ to be enthroned territorially. Look at this. I love the way the Bible puts it. As for me and my... As for me and my... Why is it important for your house to serve the Lord? If they don't want to serve, that's their cup of tea. No. As for me and my house. One time when they were fighting Jericho, they were instructed to not take anything. Is that true? That no substance should be taken. Specific instructions were given. And one man decided to hide something for himself. Because of that, an entire day, a, a, a little city began to defeat them. Now, imagine the innocent people that died because of one person's contribution. Her man, single-handedly, was going to destroy the entire nation of the Jews. We must command influence and dominion territorially to establish posterity. Our children are at the mercy of our spiritual understanding. The continuity of God's program is at the mercy of our spiritual understanding. Do not say like Esther, I am happy, I am comfortable, I know that I'm going to heaven. If you like, kill me, I'm going to heaven. What of your children? What of your grandchildren? Sometimes this selfish approach to martyrdom, we think that just because you are ready to die for Jesus, I, what of the rest? Are they ready? If I'm ready to die for Jesus and this guy is not ready, the proof that I love Jesus is that for his sake, I should say, Lord, give us time. Let this man be ready too. Most of us don't know that this our advocacy for martyrdom, it looks spiritual, it's selfishness. Lord, even if it's to kill, let them kill, I'm ready now. No, no, we are not ready. We are not ready. There are souls that should be saved. There are territories that must come under the influence of Christ. Paul said, for me to live is Christ. And even if I die, is gain. But they killed him and he came back. Correct. They killed Paul. When they left, he got up, shook himself, and said, you are joking. There, is still, there are still many other places. If I die today, it is gain for me, not for God's program. If I die today, it is gain for me as an individual. But God's program on earth will suffer a heavy blow. So what do I do as proof that I love him? Reject and cast the spirit of death. Anywhere I see it, not out of fear, but out of my desire to see that I'm alive and strong to continue advocating the frontiers of the kingdom. If you love God, don't die. Don't die soon. Live long. Remain alive. You think I'm just motivating you. Tonight's message, we're just warming up. I have some serious things to talk about here. Let me tell you this. Brothers and sisters, hear me. Africa is coming under siege. Nigeria is coming under siege. There are powers that have intelligently been coordinating a campaign to frustrate the purposes of the Christ. And because believers do not understand the territorial dimension of kingdom advance, we continue to flatter ourselves in the palace like Esther, whereas Haman is already plotting the defeat of God's people. But thank God for Esther's. Thank God for Esther's. Doesn't mean you're a lady. Esther is a prophetic office. Thank God for Esther's. The saviors that shall arise from Zion are we together? There are principles I want to share with you now. The remnant that will preserve the purposes of the Christ and make that preservation transgenerational. Take note of the word transgenerational. By the grace of God, if Christ tarries, I want to be able to stand from the shores of heaven and see that God's program still continues because we supplied a template that could not be bent. Hmm. 
we mentor believers in a way and manner that even though we have gone they still continue to stand to see that the purposes of christ is advanced let me tell you this the jews and those in israel were very wise although many of them have not personally come into the knowledge of christ but they have used the principles of judaism to understand that it is not enough to be connected to the god of abraham isaac and jacob our territory must also come and so when the neighboring nations fight territory they say no believers have this foolish understanding that because the purposes of christ is only in our hearts what do you need land for what do you need this for are we together now yes there are cities that when you entered you can almost not find land for church do you know why because the territorial dimension of kingdom advance was not taught the leaders in those days when they were free lands to get they thought that evangelism is all about once jesus is in your heart no worry how how long do you have to live and the platforms right now believers are stranded to have a place of worship is a problem because it's a campaign that was taken with intelligence over decades and the leaders as well-meaning as they were they were not strategic enough in understanding the territorial dimension of kingdom advance but in the name of jesus under our watch and in our lifetime not only individuals will lift up the name of the lord we will compel territories we will hijack the mind control systems the strata that manipulates the understanding of men this is what we are living for and it will happen we are not noisemakers there is a power and a force that backs us we do not speak cunningly devised fables we have been given the blueprint of god's program and we are following accordingly usually we will look like talkatives until you see it come to pass and it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the lord's house you know every time i read that scripture i know that god was not talking to somebody and asking me to share that idea he was writing it and saying apostle joshua selman see it this is your mandate i've taught you here that you must find where it was written about you in scripture not prophetically directly not everything written in scripture was for the saints alive many of them were written waiting for the real owner of that prophecy i found things in this bible i believe they were written for me it's true hallelujah i would share with us four principles tonight if you love jesus christ and you desire to see a generation after a generation if you desire to see nigeria the north kaduna state africa and indeed the globe stand and honor the name of the lord then pay attention to the things i want to teach you number one the first principle allocated by god's wisdom for territorial takeover thank you is the warfare dimension of prayer and intercession the first principle given to the saints by which we compel territories to come under the influence of the christ is the priestly ministry of prayer and intercession take it high for me mike listen believers please look at me prayer is not for prayer warriors prayer is for saviors there is no such thing as i don't pray because i'm not a prayer warrior and when i talk of prayer remember that i've weaned us away from this baby channel uh, uh, canal milk like prayer of give me tea give me bread he said ask me for the nations we're talking of prayer john knox prayed a prayer and said lord give me scotland not give me an estate give me a territory or take my life that you can carry one city and cut a map and put it in your prayer altar and that becomes your prayer lord to see your glory and gulf zaria no way for darkness a new spirit is about to be introduced in the territory and angels clear them out of the way because the saints are alive The Bible says hell 
had enlarged itself there are spirits that have not yet come to africa but will come i hope you know that all we see is not all there is there are inventions of mysterious sicknesses that the devil wants to send but there must be men and women who are true watchmen not just watch men as talk i will stand upon my watch and i will set myself upon the tower men who can pray darkness away men who can pray light into being men who can pray until a savior arises anna the prophetess there's no record of scripture that she was praying for a husband i hope you know she was a widow she had a legitimate ground to say oh lord while i'm visiting you now sort my life she said leave the issue of my life now i continue to pray until my eyes see the consolation of israel when jesus was brought to the temple she said now might my soul rest i am ready to go i finally seen him Hi. may god raise those kinds of christians in our days people who are concerned about the program of god more than the personal interests of tea and bread don't get me wrong these things are important but your heart when you study the world's revival evan roberts evan roberts was 26 years old when god used him to shut down the city of wales 26 many of you here are older than him when this revival happened the young man began to pray and say lord i am tired of seeing this kind of christianity i see within my territory powerless christianity and he began to pray and for a period of six months he was going to heaven every day every day from between the hours of 12 and 4 he would have a divine visitation it was the product of that visitation they got a little school for him to just start a little program and that was where the fire started people will read about what happened in wales in the newspaper and right there that fire will engulf them smith wigglesworth prophesied that it will happen again yes he told lester sumro that it will happen again he said before you die make sure you don't die with this anointing find young men transfer this mantle upon them so that we, listen this thing we are carrying did not just start with us it's a relay i don't know how old what is on me is all i know is that i received it it's like an olympic touch it's easy for us to sit down and criticize our fathers criticize the founders of different movement they brought error they brought this and run our mouths and talk nonsense and not know that now the stage is ours do you not see the eyes of eli becoming dim do you not see that the time is almost finished and god is calling on samuel samuel you are sleeping wake up eli is about to go it's a call for a generation i speak what i speak in parables but it is true the eyes of eli is closing and if Samuel does not wake up and become that prophet whose word does not fall to the ground. We raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. We will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Nada oka kasu nanka ubangi jika isala bo na kima masu nanka ubangi jika ni nada oka kasu nanka ubangi it's an anthem for a generation we raise your banner high we shine your light so bright we speak we will raise your banner high we shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. 
sit down. There used to be a song that we sang in a seminary that our generation will call your name. This is not a sermon for tea and bread. This is not a sermon for give me this. God will do it. But we're talking of nations. The ministry of warfare and intercession that an anointing must come upon a generation to pray not for the purpose of showing who is more powerful there has to be a grace it's a corporate mantle it's not just prayer groups it's starting now as little prayer groups little a time will come there will be no leader it's a grace homes will become prayer altars schools will become pray it does not matter who wants to say what it is an ordinance signed by god's integrity let me tell you this if we cannot pray as a generation we're in trouble darkness will stamp us and stamp our children oh haman do not rejoice esther is still in the palace esther is still in the palace and she still has access to Hazarus. That which has been signed can be changed. Listen to me. The days that are coming are days when we have to trust God to sort our personal needs fast so that it can give us room to focus all this issue of coming to preach series just about tea and bread we are talking of nations our children are in trouble pela sibra haskada barako teshilia hasia jele sabarusi hasa na bahashila katus pela barutas kabarinda gadishia hasa rata baraka to jele kete baria Skataba, Jada Sidas, Ebrezi Gete Lesia Hasabandaka, Raparudo Supra Catiana, Rata Cinemas, Kele Barutasia, men carrying things that belong to a generation, not a program, not a conference, carrying mantles that are generational. Hebradu Sele Barutasia. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 10. Verse 10. See, I have this day set you over territories nations 
and over kingdoms to root out to pull down to destroy to throw down to build God is giving nations like a man is about to die and he say you my estate in Kano is yours God is sharing nations and saying I, I allocate territories who can sing for me that song will bow down and say you are God you know the song sit down let's sit down we have to make progress tonight hmm. listen to me there are spiritual forces and controlling powers in every allocated territory every territory that is allocated has spiritual powers listen to me these spirits influence culture these spirits create negative patterns in the minds of people they are called familiar spirits there is a reason why they are called familiar spirits they are spirits that have dwelt with people they grew up with people i shared this morning during the church service that one time i remember i was in shiroro we were ministering in a crusade and i saw a group it was up to 15 or 16 people women it was a pattern i saw there the moment the women gave birth they became deaf and dumb immediately i said what is this it was no longer a sickness listen when you see a widespread of a pattern it's a testimony that a controlling power is reigning within a territory every territory in nigeria has the signature of the controlling powers there are territories where no matter how great the men study is the women that feed the men territories there are territories that are associated with certain things anger rage there are territories that are associated with early death you go to the territories and the youngest person is 60 years old but there are no children the parents use the children to live long controlling powers there are territories where you must end like your past you don't end like your future you can go to the u.s and spend 10 years and return back to the village in one room it's not about habits there are spirits there are many of us who have uncles who will tell you this one was a ceo this one was a customs officer but right now if you give him ten thousand he will say thank you what happened these powers there are churches there are territories where a church cannot survive five years impossible something must happen the man will die a scandal will tear him down something must happen there are powers when daniel began to pray the prayer was affecting the spirit of the Medes and the Persians. The spirits that controlled Medo-Persia. 
his prayer daniel was not saying lord sort me out uh -uh. he found out that the time of the captivity of israel in babylon had come to pass and he started praying i daniel understood by books i read and i saw that by this time in prophecy we should not be in captivity how shall we sing the lord's song in a strange land and he began to pray and when he began to pray heaven don't mind the people talking nonsense that they don't know this is not about new testament and old testament is what happens in the realm of the spirit the moment they began to pray gabriel the angel that brings messages the angel of service that archangel left the third heavens and on his way coming to the earth he was hijacked from the second heavens by one who the bible calls the prince of Persia, not the demon of Persia. there is ranking in the spirit a prince not a traditional ruler a prince let me tell you this the foolishness of many believers alongside our pride is why satan will tear nations down all these childish teachings that continue to move around that negates the reality of the realm of the spirit and the fact that there needs to be the contention of the saints will destroy our generation some of those teachings are deceptions activities of lying spirits the Bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith and they will give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons. We are watching darkness before us and we are pretending it is not there. We are watching a woman barren, her daughter barren, granddaughter barren. We say nothing is happening. How can you say nothing is happening? A grandmother raped by someone the mother raped by someone the granddaughter raped by someone you say nothing is happening find a way to believe it early in your life that there are controlling powers they don't attack you they are not interested in you they attack territories there are spirits that attack you there are spirits who don't even know who you are they were allocated to a territory when jesus was about to cast the spirit they begged him not to leave the territory we can leave the man but keep us in the territory <laughs> hallelujah please listen to what i teach you this is the redemption of our children is the preservation of God's program within our land. There is a spirit now that attacks age ranges from 10 to 18. Once you are more than 18, it does not disturb you. It's like Satan has plotted his graph and found out that the most useful age range now are our teenagers. He's not disturbing babies. He's not disturbing the young people. The old people already, they're already there. But those teenagers, I know this by the widespread pattern in our teenagers their resentment for God their obsession for technology they are outspoken that the vocal defiance that they have is the spirit of rebellion and we are watching saying nothing is happening one day my child will grow and a child of 12 shouting at his mother and while he's doing it from every territory they are doing it there is a spirit making it happen Do you believe what I'm sharing? There are some of us we cannot talk to our younger brothers or sisters now. We are 10 years older than them, but you dare not open your mouth to talk to them. You just think they are being stubborn. No, it's a spirit. The spirit of defiance, the spirit of rebellion. When those age ranges become our governors and our senators, that's when you will see the full assault. Of darkness ah but not when we are alive mm -mm. Mm -mm. God has men 
Elisha said, tell no man to come and let him know there is a prophet in Israel, not there is a God in Israel. Hallelujah. You do a program now and you want to put it on mainstream TV. If there is the name Jesus, there is the name Holy Spirit, there is the name eternal life. It falls under the same category as some of those words that we they don't allow to be pronounced including god jesus ah. you tell a preacher to preach and there's no name jesus there's no salvation there's no god there's no redemption what is he preaching The most destructive manifestation of demons is their ability to manipulate the thinking of men. It's not their ability to inflict sickness. No. That's cheap. It's not their ability to bring death. That's cheap. But to keep a man alive and to hijack them whom the God of this world, who blinded their mind? The God of this world. There are gods that station within territories. There are territories where you don't find old men. The oldest man is 43. Because anybody that crosses it dies. I've seen territories like that. There are territories where all their men are dead. The territory is full of women. Because all the men die. Some of you know what I'm talking about. It was only the male figures in your family. The devil took their lives away. And left the women. Was it not the firstborn male that was killed when Moses was born? Not women. Was it not the firstborn male, two years and above, that was killed when Jesus was born? Imagine all those women. It's a principle. So mothers are becoming both mothers and fathers because controlling powers are there. And while that is happening, we are laughing. You know, I've told you about a saying in my village that when you see your neighbor's beard, on fire get water and soak your own don't laugh the same fire is coming to you we must pray oh we must pray there are spirits we must pray when i came i was asking it me about the testimony of the dear lady one a precious lady that i came i met I saw you people so excited and I wanted to know what was going on. And when he told me the story, I said, you see it now? And someone would tell that lady that the only attack she has is the one in her mind. Are you joking? Are you joking? I've seen demons so. This is not something I'm just talking. I've seen them. The first time I saw a real physical demon, it was then in the campus. I was at going to the back of a generator there used to be a generator there and as soon as i turned i saw a real spirit and he said get back that's what he told me i'm not talking nonsense that was you read in a storybook they are not cunningly devised fables i've seen these spirits they are real i know what they do on earth i know what they do in families there are controlling powers that destroy marriages if you do not stand your ground i love you i love you is nonsense just keep going one day you will wake up and see the same woman you love that was there for you and this spirit will land on your head like a mantle and you see what happens to you what of men who kill their children have you not seen a trend recently now a trend of rape rape huh that all these guys just come and just rape ladies do you think those guys are just driven by desire are there no prostitutes no it's more than desire it's a spirit there is something it seeks to do sodomy is a spirit you know that right there is something it does and pleasure is not one of it spiritual intelligence we need to stay and ask god to teach us wisdom let us know his ways hallelujah i know territories where when you rise up 
if you dare open your mouth and say everybody come and celebrate with me see what the lord has done from that day you must go down joseph told his brothers i had a dream it's not my fault i went to bed and i had a dream the sun the moon 11 stars and the brother said that's all right they were the ones who were going to kill him listen we must learn to pray these spirits out of the way we must learn to pray these distractions you see the things that are happening in zaria now some of the developments the roads don't you think it's technology that is bringing it it's a signature of the prayer of the saints shut down the prayer of the saints in this city then you will know what satan has always wanted to do i believe in the ministry of prayer it is not the issue of being a pentecostal the days are coming when it will no longer be an issue of devotion in the morning or praying for a sermon. You are praying to secure your children. Listen, let me tell you, this day and age, listen, do you know if your child leaves home to go to school, you should pray. What happens to that child from the door of your house to school? That child is under the tutelage of someone you do not even know. By evening he will come back and ask you and ask you questions that you cannot sleep daddy what is this and you say who taught you say my teacher taught me your teacher yes sir controlling powers koinonia is not thriving just because satan does not know we are here is striving because of the invincibility of prayer fire i said it in the morning that there are departments in this ministry i supervise by myself and there is a reason why because of the strategic role that they play now every department plays that strategic role but because of the spiritual component the prayer department the worship team you always see me on their case with the leaders there is a reason why because let me tell you the truth when these instruments just become music we're in trouble when this singing just becomes entertainment we're in trouble when the prayer department just becomes a place of fellowship we're in trouble and the fire upon the altar that it shall burn day and night most churches have partners financial partners and that's all right most churches have protocol members that protect the man of god most churches have priority you know activities but the things that keep the fire are not there prayer zero worship zero let me tell you something brothers especially honestly if you are a man in this generation and this time and your priesthood ministry is not at work you are about to destroy your wife and children there is no such thing as pray for me again you pray your way and pray the climate open ah my wife and my child mother mary as you go to church pray for me that thing must end it is my prayer that the homes in koinonia don't become like shrines that they become real homes the proof of masculinity is not the huskiness of your voice is the is the dexterity of your priesthood i've advised us ladies watch out for these things in saying yes don't just say yes carelessly and say time is going the urgency on ground requires men and women who know how to burn the incense Please sit down. There are spiritual forces that shape the minds of people. A lady sent me a text recently. She just graduated. As soon as she graduated, she said she's been feeling like tearing her clothes and running on the street. Now, do you think an intelligent person will behave like that? It's a spirit. How many graduates have you seen that the moment they finish on their way going home, 
a little kekena pep just turned and left them there till a truck came and climbed them how many people have you seen final exam final paper they just find something on the ground and say that's it you are gone there is no such thing that is just is no coincidence is the manipulation of spirits you have an assignment to sanitize your atmosphere let them know you are alive start with your atmosphere sometimes i walk around my house in the night especially when i'm around i'm just walking around my house do you know not too far from my house there is a graveyard i've not seen one ghost one one ghost where will it enter and come to my house I'm dealing with matters of destiny not, not a ghost coming from somewhere what business has the dead the living to do with the dead i even wanted to buy the place they told me that there are, there are graves there ha, apostle don't buy why you are dead you are dead one time archbishop benson idahosa came and met that they killed a fowl i think it was an incantation and he saw it and he gave it that they should go and help him and cook it they had already caught it say why waste why waste meat like this in the name of nonsense sacrifice god does not love wasted he said gather the crumbs that there be no wastage see let me tell you this if you do not know the power of prayer you will fear demons to death hallelujah we sit down and allow spirits to roam around our houses i know a man true story in just years ago he was slapped by i don't know if he's a ghost or a spirit he he works then in the teaching hospital and he said he used to hear that means the um what they call that place doctor where they keep mortuary in the night while doing his work true story he will hear like discussions you know like people have woken up and they are talking true story and one time he attempted he shouted according to him he said shut up and he i don't know whether he he wanted to open the door or something i stand before the god of heaven and i lie not and the 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 spirit slapped him until that man died he did not recover spirits are real don't wait till you see them they are real my mother once told me a story they went to bury someone this thing did not I'm, I'm not sure it's more than six seven years they went to bury someone and physically as they were dropping the coffin fire physically fire came out and killed some people not parables not vision fire came out and killed some people have you seen people that they buried and you found a man back in your house all these things will remain when there is no prayer just saying i am the righteousness of god in christ hallelujah that's not the way it works we are legislators we enforce things we don't just wish things this wishing mentality will cost the church a lot you no know, it's impossible who am i that the devil will not come jesus went to fast satan went to join him he was fasting satan was fasting too he was waiting there for 40 days for jesus who do you think you are that you will not come around your vicinity from whence comest thou jesus asked satan he said from voyaging to and fro there was not a place that he did not go to have you considered my servant job yes i came to his house it's only that he built a fortification and i could not access hallelujah right now people are afraid seven o'clock people have to lock up their, their shops in many areas they are losing in business why because some tout somewhere will come and waylay them and loot and steal money and the church is just quiet don't be like esther but be like esther Parakatusiata you sense anything around your vicinity 
you don't wait to understand what it is. Tap your wife and say, wake up. When you do that twice, three times, one month, the devil will know where to pass. See, let me tell you this. Whatever you allow to happen to your life, don't blame God. Whatever you allow to happen to your family, don't blame God. I'm, I'm waking us up that territorial dominion truly happens on the strength of priesthood. Not a need-driven prayer. Hallelujah. I heard of a man recently for one, four years. I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be sure so that I don't exaggerate anything. Four years, the wife refused to get pregnant. The man was tired one day. He came back from fellowship. The wife was sleeping. He came and knelt down and put his hand on top of her, her, her stomach and prayed that woman into pregnancy. No, I mean it. If I'm joking, I'll tell you I'm joking. He was tired of this thing and said no. He knelt down. You just sleep. You are my wife. I'm the one who paid your dowry. Let me face this spirit of barrenness. See, there are times in your life you need to get agitated spiritually and stop allowing nonsense to just happen within your territory, within your family. Hallelujah. I was so encouraged when I heard it literally prayed not like impartation or yet no he sat down knelt down on top of his wife's stomach and prayed in tongues until that report changed you can pray some things out of your life and you can pray some things into your life there are times that you can put your job your 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 certificate on the ground and lock yourself from 12 to 6 you pray until where you did not apply called you. Our generation has not understood the power of prayer. Those who know how to pray are people who do not take no for an answer. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. They don't negotiate. They decide and agree. God, are you in this? If God says yes, declare anything that stands the way. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. A prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. A prayerless territory is a powerless territory. A prayerless couple is a powerless couple. A prayerless business is a powerless business. A prayerless ministry is a powerless ministry. Please sit down. Boy, our time is gone. The first key to territorial dominion is priesthood. Koinonia, pray. Don't just pray on Tuesday. Pray. Pray. You go back this night, trust God for grace. Even if it's 15 minutes, walk around your room a little before you lie down. Apostle, you don't know how busy I am. That is the excuse that is the door that the devil will use to enter your life. If you search for excuses, you will always find one. Let me tell you this. I have taught you and I pray you will believe it. Master the power of night prayers. Master the power of night prayers. A generation that sleeps all through the night into the morning is a generation that will not be powerful. I'm telling you this. See, there is a time when you will enter your Sabbath in experience. A young man, personally, now it's not, I'm not saying this is the Bible, it's my personal understanding that a young man who actually goes to bed by nine to wake up by six and you don't have time for your destiny, you are building rubbles. The night is when men who are men pray. The night is when men who are priests pray. The night is when men who are watchmen pray. The night is when gatekeepers of destiny pray. Let me tell you sincerely, I have not slept in days like real sleep to take out time 
and sleep. It's a sacrifice. You are supposed to get a job that God will use to change your family and your territory. And while you are sleeping, they send a letter from a parastator. We need these 41 names in the list. And there are spirits waiting there to decide what name will be removed. And every other person is in a Habali shrine, forcing his name to remain there. And you are snoring away. Your, your sleep is the marker that will clean your name out of that list you can stay and insist I may not have access to the office but I can pray I can pray I've seen the ministry of angels in my life I know that angels are real I know that they are real when you pray there are times I've tried to look for things and I could not find them and I prayed and slept and in my dream I got up and went to where it was and I woke up and went there physically and carried it many of us do not understand the ministry of angels because we do not pray in the name of Jesus every prayerlessness and spiritual laziness upon your life I curse it now this night In the name of Jesus, all the movies, internet, browsing that distract you, I'm not saying they are wrong, but if it can sit down and distract your prayer life, I separate you from it now. It was in the night that Jacob wrestled with God and got power. It was in the night that God came to Solomon and he received something. Men receive things in the night. Don't waste your night. Charge your atmosphere. Sleep under a heavy atmosphere of worship. While you are sleeping, you are receiving. You wake up in the middle of the night and you know an impartation is ongoing. See, let me tell you, these are not things where these are things we have practiced for years strong worship in that atmosphere while you sleep and you will keep having all kinds of dreams sometimes the dreams will show you the root cause of things sometimes you are hearing a message and in the dream you will start acting the message you are alive to the message Hi. Oh Lord, help our generation. Help our generation. Help our generation in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me? If you are a minister of the gospel in this place, that means you are in ministry or you are trusting God to be in ministry. Please wake up. I deliver you from laziness. Hear me? Ministry is not about suits and agbada and protocol ministry is serious business you know all this and i say this respectfully to our younger generation most of these boys do not understand the gravity of attack that can come to your life when you are in ministry they are just happy and just loiter around in pride one attack will kneel you down you need to be powerful with god are we blessed Number two, goodness. The second principle of territorial dominion is the power of faith. Hebrews 11, 33. The power of faith. You cannot take over a territory when you doubt God. You cannot take over a territory when you do not believe God Hebrews 11 please read everyone one two read who through faith uh -huh, subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness obtained promises stopped the mouth of lions listen 
the bible says this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith what is faith your conviction your depth of persuasion on who god is and the integrity of his person that convinces you enough to believe god and take action you will need the audacity that faith brings to reign in life life is not for weak people life is not for risk averse people life is for men and women who are courageous enough to storm the gates of destiny ah, the bible says that listen he said that lot and co were hijacked and captured and abraham said what did i hear you carried my cousin gather all the war men and let us go Hi, courage courage faith the righteous are as bold as a lion that lion dimension is not supposed to help you harass people the lion dimension is so that you will be able to stand in the face of situations and say you can bring your best shot satan i will still be standing it takes faith to build a church it takes faith to start tv ministry that will bless people it does not take money it takes faith first it takes faith to raise your children we are a generation that is obsessed with guarantee give me a guarantee that you will be there for me there is no guarantee anywhere in destiny please hear me everybody say faith when god called me to ministry i called my father and my mother and i knelt down before them and i told them god has called me all my life i'm going to be busy serving the purposes of the kingdom my parents said god bless you we bid you godspeed go well that's it i'm not doing well because the church i was serving before did not give me money no sir listen let me tell you this faith creates everything out of nothing did you hear what i said your house now is in your faith the money you need is in your faith please learn the laws of faith faith is predicated upon a revelation that god is able the ability of god and his integrity everything looks impossible till faith brings it god will never tell you what you can do you know you have had god when what he says is bigger than you when god told me of the things that you'll be doing with this ministry around the world when god showed me and told me the things that you the power of faith but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded lift your voice and pray everyone please pray pray where you are pray from the depth of your heart Please pray from the depth of your heart. Pray everyone, you are praying in the spirit.
Bala bus, ala branda gada bala dus. Rata bara tu sasia tak kata brandi gede bala raba. Arapa suta bala daba gada branda gede bala debu. Sekete branda daba bala daba ratu sate branda gede bala debu. Emprata katu prati sele prati gede bala rabu. Jika para tu sada berada gede balarabu, em pretake la prasada balatu berada gede balarabu. Skala baranda kata pras gede balatu sabra di gede balarabu. Em prataka prosede belekete shala paria da balaraba. Rapa tu sada beranda gada baladu. Say sacrifice you are making for your destiny. Say sacrifice you are making for his kingdom. Shiparuta Salabara. Two more minutes. Pray in the spirit. Shabarada balakata bradegedesh. Skade barada balada bakota shada bradegede baladas. Emprata kaparuta shala bradegede balad. Balabu shalabrandi gidi balas, ekete labradu shalabrandi gidi balada balada bu. Sebaru kasi labahasi ada balada bu. Alleluia, alleluia. Listen to me. Forget about the temporary inconvenience that you are going through. You are building something for a generation. You are building something that will last. Rain will come and go, but what comes upon you comes and stays. Are we together now? Praise the Lord. Let's continue. The power of faith. Now faith is, the Bible says, the substance of things hoped for and the evidence the tangibility of things not seen hear me everyone you want to take over territories you will need to believe in god not believe in an uncle 
not believe in an ante, not believe in an asset, not believe in an investment. You need to believe in God. God is able. I may not know how, but I know that he will build for himself what will bring him glory. Many Christians, and especially our generation, we don't command results because we truly do not walk our faith. We doubt everything and we do not take God at his word. I've given you a little story years ago when I used to bank those days with First Bank. Way before many of these facilities started coming that we now use to make banking easier. Then I would not have money at all in the bank. My faith was that rugged. I'm not saying do it. I remember those days I would pray and trust God for miracle a lot. And I will stand up and start trekking to First Bank. I will queue for hours believing. Because I read in my Bible, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believest that thou receivest it. I took it literally. Many times I didn't find anything, unfortunately. But I didn't realize that what I was gaining was more than the money. I was gaining the flexibility of my faith. The, the ability to believe God at his word. Let me tell you this. When you are walking with God, you need to believe God. There are times God will tell you, wake up and go outside. You will go outside and nothing will happen. He will just say, go back. And your going out was profitless. But your faith is being developed. The idea is not for you to go and see or receive something. The idea is an exercise of your faith so that tomorrow when he says take this nation you say lord i'm able we are well able unbelief is dangerous my only limitation in my life is the voice of god and time my only limitation in life is the voice of god and time time that honors the law of process if God tells me to walk through this crowd to that door, I will not even see that rain is falling. I'm on my way going. Whatever stands my way, the faith that God gives. Do you not know that faith is a shield? You can use faith as a shield. It's a wherein you will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You are not the first to be persecuted. You are not the first... To be challenged by evil spirits it will take your faith to command victory we're a generation that loves impartation and impartation is important but let me tell you something there are dimensions of destiny work that impartation will not bring it's a well you have to dig by believing god if i perish i perish When God spoke about koinonia, I believed him enough to take action. When God spoke about the messages being heralded by his angel and taking it around the earth, I believed him. Today we've seen all kinds of miracles over our teachings. You've heard some of them. That someone will buy a brand new flash drive from the place where he bought it and take it home brand new out of the cave slot it in and there are koinonia messages all how do you explain that that's what happened when faith listen you will never see the glory of god until you believe you will never see the glory of god until you believe we're a generation that is obsessed with guarantee before we move your only guarantee is the word of God. The word of God. Everything God told me about ministry, about destiny, I believed him. I still do. I still do. From the days when we could not afford bonds and could not afford a proper meal, I believe that was a career of the blessing. From the day when I could not pray for one person to be healed of headache, I believe that his anointing was upon my life. 
and I believed that he was going to use me. We are going to pray one prayer. I'm going to change my style of teaching now since there is rain. I'm so happy for the rain because it will take away unnecessary formality and keep you to listen. So now you are going to pray. Help my unbelief. Lord, whatever it is that is killing my faith and not allowing me to trust you. Help my unbelief. I claim that I trust you. But it's really my uncle that I trust. I claim I trust you. But it's really my certificates that I trust. I claim I trust you. But it's really my skill, my gift. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. You are praying it for your destiny. You are praying it so that you can command dominion. Lord, I trust you. The grace to believe you. Believe you for my finances. Believe you to open doors. God is not a man that he should lie. God is not the son of man that he should repent. If he speaks, he is able to bring his word to pass. Please pray, pray. Koinonia, pray. He reigns, he reigns, he is standing by my side to bring his word to pass. He reigns, he reigns, my God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. Listen, hear me. You need to shake off unbelief from your life today and say, Lord, I believe you. I may let everyone call me stupid, but I believe you. Let everyone mock me and laugh at me, but I believe you. I believe you. Your word is true, and I believe you. When you say I am great, I believe you. When you say I am the head, I believe you. When you say I am not the tail, I believe you. When you say Gentiles shall come to my light, I believe you. When you say their kings will come to the brightness of my rising, I believe you. Listen, there are some of you in this place. God has told you you will stand before nations. But as it is, you look so weak and you will not believe it. You don't know the village I come from. I cannot even speak English well. That's not what God is saying. Believe me and let me take you there. By myself. Years ago, 
when God told me he was giving me access to kings and people in government I believed him our very first crusade I demanded to see and let us share fellowship with the king of the land we didn't have the opportunity to do it the first time every one of our crusades that we had gone I demanded an audience with the kings because God told me he would give me access to kings I believe God it's none of your business who my father is it's none of your business who my mother is that's not what God said that's not the condition for his word I believe him the same way some of you are here and God you go to bed and you see yourself carrying the baton of generals you wake up in the morning and say it's a lie it's not for people like us we are the any house stop that that ungodly talk and say lord with all humility i believe let it come i believe you it was in port Harcourt. i was tending to a sick one of our sick aunties where i was staying in 2007 i was in port Harcourt. And she was on her sick bed. She eventually died. And I was taking care of her in the teaching hospital there. And I was there. We were running shifts. And then from the, I don't know which of the floors now. I just looked at um, the window. And all of a sudden, I was caught up in a vision. And in that vision, I saw the international headquarters of this ministry. I saw 37 flags and I saw white men I saw nations coming I said what is this and God said that's where you are going I believed him I said let's go oh God let's go I believe you God told me I will never beg one king and beg any man for audience I believed him I believed him I believed him Do, can you believe God one day I remember growing up I told my mother I said do not worry about the things that are happening one day you will eat and never have to beg for bread again and it will be in your lifetime I said it see the righteousness of faith speaks it does not assume you make statements that sometimes you are afraid my wife right now we may be soaking Gary but in the name of Jesus, we will give to nations. And when you say the devil will speak to your ears and say, foolish man, respect yourself. My faith, it reaches out to you. I believe your word for me today. My faith reaches out to you I believe I believe your word for me, your word for me today listen one day I was praying and the Lord spoke to me and said son I will give you a gold mine I believed it literally I know it may have a prophetic meaning but I believed it literally until three years ago when three kings came together to give me 18.5 hectares of a gold mine God said it and I believed it see listen let me tell you this this ego and the feeling of saying let them not say I believed God and it was a lie if you don't throw that thing away to stand and trust God so what if you find out it's not God that said it you readjust and move this ego is why many people will not grow God said it but I'm ashamed I'm afraid let them not laugh at me I remember when God gave me an instruction to empty my entire finance it was a stupid thing it was suicidal but I did it and God told me I would never beg for bread in my life again I remember it was in this ministry God gave an instruction to empty the account of the ministry literally 0.00 and I believed him 
stupidly believed him one week after that God brought a harvest that till tomorrow we will not recover from but I know whom I believed if God says I will give you a house believe him if God says you will feed nations believe him if God says you will pay the school fees of a generation believe him don't believe your ATM let God be true and every man a liar please hear what I'm telling you today this life and this destiny I stand before the God of heaven and may I be forgiven if it's a show of arrogance but there are many things one of the things that God does with me is he mandates me to declare what he said before it happens there are many things that I've said today prof said something here that really touched me um, in the morning and he said that one of his daughters he remembered when we were meeting those days on campus and that I said that God is bringing mantle a mantle of people for kingdom financiers and he saw his then little daughter she was rolling under the anointing and he looked at her and was wondering and he said that she got a job and within one year bought a car of over three million and he said he was surprised when God says it he would do it if he did it before he can do it again Before, if he did it before, we can do it again. Same God right now. Same God right now. Same God back right there. If he did it before, he will do it again. We can do it again. Same God right now. Same God right now. Same God back there. Same God back there. Listen. When we started the Koinonia worship team, I stopped these guys for many years from going for external ministrations. And I told them, I said, do you know why? I know what God showed me about you. That days will come, you will sing and nations will sing your songs. Stay and be dealt with by the Spirit. Those days, some of them didn't understand because they wanted to go for programs and I said, sit down. Sit down. Today, it's amazing the way one by one. It's already starting like droplets, but it's an avalanche. It will come and you will see the songs that come from here. Songs that will mentor nations. Songs of warfare. Songs of victory. Songs of the throne. You see, most times we don't believe men till it's too late. We we'll say, he said it all. I believe him. I believe you. That's why you see me stand to teach you. Do you know, let me confess, true confession. I was, I had a meeting before coming here. You know, I had a meeting and then um, just briefly met with uh, a family and then a woman before coming, preparing to come for Koinonia. And while I was preparing, I was so tired. I sat down and I didn't know which one to do, to eat or to rest. And I stood, I was so tired. And I was telling the woman, I said, my God, all I want to do now is to sleep. But I just got up. I said, I rebuke that statement. There is a generation to mentor. There are people to raise. And she said, ah, Apostle, I know you. As soon as you are done with all this talk, the zeal of the Lord that is in you, you will quickly go and prepare and stand up. And truly, you see me standing now. I'm done here and I'm counseling for hours. Seven in the morning, I'm out of this city just to go and just perform a function, do a few things and return sacrifice but that happens because god said so god promised me that he will keep me strong and vibrant i believed him you do what i do in the strength of the flesh you will not be sick you will die i say it without exaggeration you literally will fall down and you will die one day my father warned me and said look my son just do your best take out time once in a while and rest i said i know and i believe i will rest but the king's business requires haste. There are destinies to be raised. There are impartations to come to nations. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I went to bed to five. It was as if I just turned my head and I checked the time. And it was morning. The last thing I remember was that I was going to take, there was water by the side of my bed and a drink. And I remember I was preparing that in five minutes I would just turn and take a sip. And I had slept. It was already morning. And I got up, had to brush up on my notes to come. Why? Because when you are about his business, he will maintain you. There are things you cannot lie about. Not for long. It will be clear. See, let me tell you this. God has been faithful to me. You see these hands? I have laid these hands on different sicknesses and diseases. Communicable ones. I'm not supposed to be alive today. Based on the things and the people I have touched. You must believe God. God told me, forget about cars and houses. Focus on me. I've raised men already to do that for you. I remember when someone came and met me to give me a car. I was happy and God said, it's not your car. Just pray for him and let him carry his car and go. I wanted to say, God, the next time you will give me lift. <laughs> but I was happy. Do you believe what I share with you? Can you spare me five more minutes? Are you tired? I know you are tired. You are just passionate. But listen, let me tell you this. You must love tomorrow more than today to enter that tomorrow. If you love your today more than tomorrow, the door has closed. Closed by you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When I was in secondary school and the fire of God fell upon us, we started a prayer group and a prayer movement called Operation Catacruz. Yes. We would pray sometimes immediately after preps. It was supposed to be a little one hour prayer. And some of these weak spirited people who are feeling sleepy would just tell them, look, go to your hostel and sleep. One hour it will become a vigil. I was made the timekeeper of the school in JS2. That was the level of the hand of God that was upon my life. Quarter to five, someone would wake me every day without fail. Quarter to five. That was when I started having encounters with this. I didn't even know that they were angelic encounters. Fifteen minutes on the dot to five. Don't tap me. I wake up. Father, help this generation. In the name of Jesus. Help us to be so consumed by the reality of the realm of the spirit. And the power that that realm wields upon this realm. All you see is not all there is. Hallelujah. So when you hear a word like you are blessed when you hear a word like doors be open many of us just say amen as a christian response to a man of god's prayer but a few people will believe god and take him literally and said when i said amen i said let it be so where is it oh god i said amen i expect an answer hmm. the last that i will give us and then we're done territorial advancement the last key let me five minutes and we are done the power are we ready the power of consistent results one of the kingdom keys allocated for dominating a territory is consistent results Let me tell you this consistent results shows that there is understanding consistent results show that there is knowledge consistent results show that mastery has been attained consistent results
years ago I started watching a man who would lift people off wheelchairs and crutches as though it was a joke he would stand and look at them and just pray a simple prayer sometimes even be sarcastic about it and throw the wheelchair and throw the crutch and said walk and that's the end of it in in about six years he raised about nine thousand crutches and wheelchairs his his church is full of crutches around the church i said this is mastery i must go down to see him he was in south africa and i traveled he's going to be with the lord now prophet kobus van rensburg i traveled to south africa to meet him and i met him and i told him why i was here i was not there for for pilgrimage i was not there for entertainment i was there for business i said i desire this grace i desire it it is a grace Ten thousand crutches cannot be mistake now many unbelieving members yet they were also raising crutches you could see that they didn't have faith yet they would say walk and joke with it you see many times when the leader that you are under is carrying a grace you will cheaply receive that grace listen when you receive that grace and receive that dimension many times you will see how cheap it works some of you here who are under this ministry and under this covering you will go for meetings casually and just say let's pray and the power of god is here and it will be as if you are acting drama and even you you have not really studied the dynamics of the anointing many people started getting prosperous in living faith before they read about prosperity it was later they found out they were even sinners because they were not tightened yet they were still enjoying abundance say okay lord forgive me now i'll start doing it properly some people were strolling and just saw prayer city prayer was going in and they said let me go and find out what is going on there and from that day they cannot sleep again till they pray because a grace came upon them let me tell you this results are governed by three things one light two please listen results are governed by three things one light two association three graces these are the factors that govern results in this kingdom never forget it light the depth of the spiritual illumination you have as it pertains the area where you want to see result number two association god called abraham and lot went with him and then number three graces if there is any area in your life where you are not commanding results check for these three things one there is a dimension of spiritual illumination that you are lacking number two there is a community of people with that grace that you have not honored and number three there is a dimension of grace that has not rested upon you it is easy to produce results when you know the laws that govern them hallelujah do you know let me tell you as little as this thing our, our time is up as little as what i shared with you is if you understand this mystery my brothers and my sisters there are dimensions that god has cheaply committed to this ministry you will enter into it like a joke you know it pains me when i see certain graces that are so lavishly available but there is no widespread testament of people who have entered that dimension the knowledge you have the spiritual understanding number two your association not just in terms of friends also the covenants the tribe that you come under that you are grafted into and then number three the graces that are upon your life any man who is exposed to these tripartite forces will be a strange man upon the earth when i traveled to south africa to meet prophet kobus van rensburg i'd wanted going to meet robert Lerdan and then Charles and Francis Hunter. Unfortunately, I couldn't meet them. I sat down and I listed like an architect the graces that will construct the house. I listed them and I searched for the individuals that had those graces. Like a chef says, I need salt. 
where do we buy salt sabo where do we this is how i listed these graces like a bee and i searched for them one by one i was very very foolish at a point in my life i knew that wisdom will be part of the graces that i would need for my life and i would need for this apostolic office i pursued dr miles moon mudok and bishop david oyedeko these were the two dimensions of, of wisdom that came to my life i saw the wisdom of god at work in their life and i said this foolishness must end i pursued that grace i pursued it with all my heart are we together yes results whoever commands results becomes the leader whoever commands results becomes the force to reckon with i submit to you that many of the dimensions that you see in my life and in this ministry they are not guesswork there is an exact knowledge that is back of them they will continue to be reproduced again and again when there is increase when there is the outstretched hand of god when there is favor there is prosperity when there is passion and hunger for god these are results please do not join the people who ignore results i'm wrapping up i know the rain is done but just just be patient make sure as they are coming out they are still listening please you are going to pray for results listen to me i told myself god there is no need to be in ministry if i'm not producing results that you bear fruits and that your fruits abide much fruits some of you who are visiting this place for the first time will go back and know that god is here you met him it's called results the next time you come you will not come alone let me tell you empty pews are proof of lack of results it's an uncomfortable truth but it is true are we together in fact empty anything emptiness is proof that you do not understand the laws that govern you i knew i saw the way pastors used to raise money now please i'm not being sarcastic with all respect and all honor to men of god and the body of christ but i saw the way people were being manipulated to raise money i saw the way pastors birthday pastor I, I said no this is not bible but then i asked myself a question how will you eat and how will the ministry thrive and then i said i have to go to the word of god and find out and then i found out that god can open a door for a man that no man can shut i found out that there was an exactitude to the blessing of god let me show you one of the most recent scripture I found. 1 Corinthians 29, 12. I apologize, we are wrapping up. 1 first, first Chronicles 29, 12. 1 Chronicles 29, 12. I saw this scripture in my dream. I was sleeping and this scripture came and I woke up and I saw it and I rejoiced. I said, that means God is shifting me to another dimension both riches and what honor come from you you reign over all of them it's a dangerous scripture both riches and honor come from thee you reign over all and in thy hand is power and might look at all the things we need in one verse riches honor power might greatness strength god is the owner i saw it in my dream i went to sleep oh, and i saw that scripture i got up and i searched it i said this is this if this scripture were a clot it would have faded by now i've prayed this scripture into my life See, I stepped into the grace for favor when I prayed for favor for one month. That was my prayer request. Not for a selfish reason. Lord, a man can carry favor bodily, 
let me be an example of it do you know many times when i pray these things is so that i will bring it and you will receive it's not so much for myself when i received the grace for long life it, it was with speed the day i was coming for koinonia it was as if i was going for my wedding reception give me chance let me stand these people were singing and i couldn't wait for them to finish singing so that i would climb up i came with a grace that i did not have the grace for long life You can carry graces like a fisherman when you catch something and you push your hook you draw it force it out when you see what it is this kingdom is a kingdom of deep mysteries deep mysteries deep mysteries hallelujah both riches and honor come from you thou reignest over all and in thy hand is power and might and in thy hand is to make great look god is the maker of greatness when god selects you to be great he selects you to be the face of a generation it doesn't matter who thinks what or does not think it god has chosen this ministry God has chosen us by the privilege of his grace to be one of the major pillars of what he's doing in this generation. It's an honor we receive. He made it so. Results. We are going to pray. We have to wrap up. Listen to me. Koinonia, hear me. My heart is pained if your life does not command results let it first start from your life then we'll start commanding results over territories was it not joshua that told the son to stand results there are results that can shut down a nation in one day a time will come kings will come to seek the counsel of god from us and say what is god saying he said kings will entreat your favor When God told me he would give me access to kings and I would speak to kings in this nation, I believed him. Listen, it's not pride. In two weeks, I'm going to be speaking to all the legislators in this country in a breakfast meeting. All of them gathered in one place, the International Conference Center, and I will be speaking to them, the counsel of God. When God says it, I believe it. Listen. It, this thing is not it's not it's not about a man i hope you understand what i'm saying results are powerful if you doubt results then what are you at results you must insist that my fig tree must bear fruit i'm tired of green leaves lord this fig tree must bear fruit he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water whose leaves does not wither is someone ready to pray please take two minutes blast in tongues and cry honor my life with results oh god results honor my life with results Please pray. You ray, you ray, hello, you ray, you ray.
learn this there is an anointing there is an anointing that translates men swallows up the weaknesses of people may that be your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ God will give you wisdom let your ministry enter another dimension I pray for character for all of you see this is usually the problem listen let me I'm, I'm teaching you are learning the most important aspect of the anointing is the character to maintain it not the anointing because you see the anointing is very charismatic the most powerful ability of a man of God is self-control the ability to keep quiet even when you have what to say the ability to walk within the jurisdiction of the grace apportion there are many of we people we don't have self-control especially over an opportunity like this everybody now wants to show and you do not know where God has stopped and you want to continue to stretch it to show you are anointed and then you step out of the spirit and begin to walk in the flesh because some of you are here for this same anointing but you see the, it's not just the anointing believe me this is not an issue of prayer and fasting it's an issue of knowing God and understanding his ways God is only committed to backing what he instructed if he did not direct you he will not back you hallelujah god bless you john chapter 3 verse 16 let's just look at the scripture quickly and then we'll pray there is a lot that god wants to do tonight these guys have already stared the anointing and you see the thing with the anointing is once he's stared it doesn't stop he doesn't know whether it's miracle service or easter john chapter 3 verse 16 I like you all to be sensitive the anointing has been stirred up in this place many of you do not know what the stirring of the anointing is the moment your eyes sees there is a relationship between your heart and your eyes so once your eyes sees it immediately your spirit is open and the moment your spirit is open the spirit of God starts moving he doesn't care whether you are preached or not because that's his desire hallelujah and usually once the anointing starts moving it's very difficult to contain it because the hearts of people are open in the name of Jesus I'm hearing the sound of thunder I know this is not physical I'm hearing a sound of thunder like lightning is coming upon people right now in the congregation why do I see this? It's like the sound of thunder. Thunder. It's what I hear in my spirit. It's a sound. hallelujah please pay attention the meeting is on i'm seeing ministering spirits it's a class of angels i'm seeing them walk inside and outside just let me do what is happening ministering spirits there are not many times i see these kinds of angels 
I'm seeing them walking inside and outside, ministering spirits. They are angels that impart strange levels of graces. Ah, ah, yeah. They will touch you where you are. It will be like fire. They will touch you where you are. As they touch you, they release your miracles. As they touch you, they release your breakthroughs. As they touch you, they break those chains. Nah. They are touching you on behalf of families. Touching you on behalf of families. direction that's what i hear god is giving men direction it's like an anointing it will come on you outside and inside direction an end to that confusion right now it's coming like light but then you will hear him direct you direction 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 what is that area of confusion his light shines upon it right now for marriage direction 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 for where to settle down geographic location direction is coming by the holy ghost direction somebody is praying and say lord show me the lord is saying i am showing you is coming upon your spirit i'm giving you direction on what to do direction hallelujah i'm seeing the names of people written on a paper and put under a stone and the Lord is saying, take it out. Lord, where are those people whose destinies have been buried? As I'm speaking right now, inside and outside. Right now, right now. As I speak, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Right now, where you are sitting, you will receive a visitation. I pull it out. This is a miracle service. I pull it out now. Oh yes, release that lady. I see it in the spirit. Release that lady right now. Release that lady's destiny. Is happening to you where you are something is happening to you where you are
begin to receive it by faith like the dew of heaven resting in this place inside and outside Lord we receive what you are doing If you can, those under the anointing, just leave them. John 3 16. I just want to. The Lord has just healed a lady of a breast lump. You have a lump in your left breast. Check it right now. Check it right now. Check it and come out right now. Right now. I don't know why God is just interrupting. Please check it. Check it. Check it right now. In fact, I see three people. Check it. This is a family. Please, we are not playing games. Inside and outside. I'm seeing three ladies who came with like a lump on their breast check it right now that devil has gone back to hell please check it quickly and come out if they are under the anointing when they, when they are alright let them come out very quickly let them come out quickly Augustina Augustina I'm hearing a name like Augustina Augustina If there's someone like that you can just make your way to the front quickly augustina the lord is judging evil in your family this is oppression this is what i'm seeing oppression as is happening to you there's somebody outside this same anointing is touching the person outside the second overflow the anointing of the spirit is touching somebody outside the Lord is bringing judgment to wickedness because I'm seeing that this is something that has to do with witchcraft it has tied your life and your family down and the Lord is telling me release Augustina release Augustina release Augustina release Augustina and as it's happening to you it's also happening to that other lady in the name of Jesus I release you right now from every chain that has held you be released your family be released it's time for you to testify I release both of you prophetically in the name of Jesus Christ every door the devil has tied let it be opened by the anointing of the Spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 
I'm seeing a whole family that came. There is a family God wants me to minister to. You are five. Five people. I don't know if there is a mother. I'm seeing a family with five people who came from somewhere and the Lord wants me to minister to them. You are five in all. You are five in all. Please, when you identify them, they can come up so that we will just minister to them very quickly. Hallelujah. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world and the Bible says that he proved that love by giving his only begotten son. Please listen. Don't worry about what is happening. Just let me have your attention please. He says he gave his only begotten son. This we can take it from there. That that statement he gave his only begotten son is the summation of the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ. Are we together now? Please help her, wrap her. I command that spirit to leave her right now. now and never return in the name of Jesus release her family release I see a lot of money being tied release it now as you go in the name of Jesus the Christ So the Bible says he gave his only begotten son. Hallelujah. For God so loved the world. The word there is cosmos. The social system that has to do with people. Listen please. And has to do with the entire territory. The social system. He says for God so loved the world. And he proved that love. Listen, listen. Because love must be manifested to be appreciated. Are we together now? And the Bible says that he gave his only begotten son. And please don't be confused. There is a name. That son is called Jesus. Because there are many people who can preach to be the begotten of the father. But the only begotten son who after his resurrection now became the first begotten. Right? Until the resurrection of man, he was the only begotten. Please listen. You see, everything about this Bible was pointing to this very revelation. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Everything. The book of Revelation says the revelation of Jesus Christ. Not the revelation of a formula or a principle. So the law... The prophets, Abraham, Samson, Isaac, Judges, everything was tracing to the genealogy of Jesus Christ. And then the Bible says that he manifested himself before people and he was full of grace and truth. Listen, Jesus came with a message and his message was very simple. He said, repent. The word repent is not the word turn from your sins. No. Preachers preach that as a result of lack of understanding. The word repent is an indication of completely turning from a direction to another. Please just be patient with me. This family or minister to you. Are we together now? Turning from one direction to the other. But 
the first step to that turning is acknowledging a person his sacrifice and his government that's the first step and then you begin to walk in accordance to his principles only when you do that are you said to have repented many people have not repented they want to repent they think they have repented they hope they are repenting the first message that was preached after the resurrection of Christ is that men and brethren, what shall we do? And this is what the apostle said, repent for the remission of your sins. So the Bible says he gave his only begotten son. You laid aside your majesty, gave up everything for me, suffered at the hands. Of those you have created, you took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again. Now, today, in heaven, if you know it, just sing it with me. I really want to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart and I am yours Forever and ever I will love you You are the only one Gave your life Like you give your ATM for someone to use and withdraw money. He gave, he donated. And Jesus came upon the earth and he began to do many great things. Listen, Jesus did not just come. Please, I want you to pay attention. It's going to be very brief and we'll begin to pray. Jesus did not just come to show us how God looked alone. He came to show us how we should look. So when he walked upon the earth, he was the prototype of God's idea of the man he had created. He was invincible, the Bible records. Above situations, above circumstance, with unlimited power, yet a man of extreme self-control. He knew when to speak and he knew when to keep quiet. There would be so many sick people like the 10 lepers he would heal one and just walk away because his desire was not to show power his desire was to do the will of the father he was more interested in bringing satisfaction to his father than building a ministry people tried to say look build a ministry and he said no 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 no, no. i can of my own do nothing as I see my father do. So he came to show us the prototype of the true Christian life. A life that is completely yielded to the will of the father. Void of self-ambition. Void of a desire for vain glory and personal gratification outside of Christ. A life that is crucified with Christ. Are we together now? And then... The Bible begins to describe to us that which happened today many years ago. We know it as the passion of the Christ. It started from the communion where they came into him by covenant so that they would authorize him. John chapter 6 says, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you cannot be part of me. You cannot have my life. So while they were taking the communion, they were giving him access to carry the sin of man upon himself and then the bible says he went to gethsemane and there he cried he prayed until tears were like drops of blood afterwards he was ready to be crucified and brothers and sisters i know that we celebrate easter today is good friday pain is what made today good are we together sacrifice is what made today good 
if he refused to lay down his life listen when Pilate looked at him and said don't you know I have the power to free he said, ah, 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 ah. He said no man has this power except it is given unto him by my father he said I have the power to lay it down and the power to pick it up again in other words I was not coerced my love for you made me to sacrifice my life my reputation and everything we talk a lot about good friday but we never know what made it good this is what made it good that a man gave his son then the son gave his life are we together now it's one thing to give your child it's another thing for the child to agree he can refuse jesus had the right to refuse in fact he was tempted to negotiate it he said father if it be possible you are the all wise god there is another way you can do this thing but then he remembered nevertheless i told you the hallmark of sonship is servanthood the true proof that you are a son is that you can give up sonship to become a servant are we together now the father gave jesus jesus gave his life and don't be confused he gave his blood he gave his righteousness are we together now he gave up his position and when he was doing that he had you in mind listen listen he never went to the cross because of anything he did of himself the bible says he was a man touched with the feelings of our infirmity yet without sin but he took your place because the bible says we all like sheep have gone astray right he said every man has gone his own way with our ideas about god our ideas about success would you give our mother a chair please let her just sit down i'll minister to you in a moment please at least let her just sit down hallelujah well all of you you can sit down i'll call you now they are all looking at me um sit down especially this my friend friend how are you what's his name Aaron Kelvin just get somewhere they can sit around and I'll attend to you now just five minutes let me establish what hallelujah so please come sir I offend a government and they are about to destroy me listen please about to destroy me and the bible testifies that i have no power in myself and then someone comes and while i'm on my way to destruction he interrupts and he says i love you too much to let you keep gambling and trying your way this is what i want you to do stand back and watch me pay the price and while he was on the way while they were flogging him in his mind he was saying mankind i hope you are watching this would have been you i hope you are watching i hope you are watching the scars as he began to bleed he said i hope you are watching see if two people come and they tell you they love you the best answer to give those two people is i'm watching because love is a verb are we together now i am what all kinds of things have told you they love you but they left you but jesus said watch my love i'm not going to make noise about it first stand back and while they flogged him he said if it's for you i will still go the extra mile and they flogged him the father gave him he gave his health the father gave him he gave his prosperity the father gave him when we say his life let's break it down what what is in his life that he gave because that's what he gave you what was in the life of jesus the ability to reign and rise above sickness and diseases the father gave him he gave it away in exchange the bible says he was rich but he gave it are we together now he had a reputation of dominion 
but he laid it aside i hope you know that they stripped him naked the covering you see around is just for social reasons when you are watching movies a 33 year old man naked children watched him adults watched him people mocked at him and said you claim to be a king and he said this is all for you are we together blood dripping out from every part of his body every time he was tempted to give up he said no if i give up where i stop is where you must continue and i know that even if it was for the last nail you still will not be able to take it see listen if you think what happened on the cross is what jesus just died for physically you'll be deceived because there are human beings who have been crucified what he stopped you from was not the physical activity it was what was happening in the spirit you can do the physical one i guarantee you people have been crucified but you don't know what that meant in the spirit a lot was interplaying in the spirit while that was happening he became adam from gethsemane from gethsemane to the cross he was no longer the christ he was jesus adam the very man of sin mortality came upon him please listen and the father kept watching he had given him and he knew that it is more blessed to give than to receive so there was no negotiation about receiving the blessing was that he would bring many sons into glory are we together now when they took him to that cross and they nailed him as his blood began to drip upon the earth and in that excruciating pain it was a way of torturing criminals he was not just looking at mary and john he was looking at you he was looking at me he was looking at every witchcraft in our family and every ordinance of darkness and he said if it's for you i will do it but he made a very interesting statement we are going to establish tonight three words that represented victory it is finished oh hallelujah i didn't study english but i know that when a man says it is finished it is finished is a reality that is present and continuous forever not it was finished you would have said the condition for it finishing has changed so we have to start another one it is finished the question is what is the it that has been finished first that inability to access the father we call it lack of righteousness he said that error is finished that 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 christianity that has to do with ceremonial cleansings having to atone for your sins by your own strength i brought it to an end that ability of saying qualify and come to god he said it is finished you now will come through my own invitation my own access like i organize a program and I invite someone and while you are about to drive him I say no 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 that's my guest come but you are not only his guest he also made you the one to be celebrated please listen there is a dimension of this we have not learned and this is what I want to teach us when Jesus went to hell and met Satan a discussion transpired and Satan said remember Adam and he said i don't remember adam i am him don't you see this is adam and satan knew it was true because only adam had the right to collect the key no other man could collect the key and so he went as the second adam and said you killed adam and every man that came from him let me have the keys revelations 1 verse 1 when you read down what i am he that was dead but now i am alive and i hold the keys he collected the keys listen access to the earth access to dominion access to god's life 
that's the most important part the life of god i'm going to explain it when he resurrected watch this did you know that if he just started walking and doing all of the things he did man would not be able to partake of it because he had not ascended to heaven it would just be that he was victorious and then the bible says according to the book of hebrews that he went to heaven as the high priest the lamb the sacrifice as everything and then he took his blood poured it upon that tabernacle and said father you are just for seeing that man does not have access to divine health and all of this because you are a just god your throne is founded upon righteousness and justice the bible says they are the foundations meaning there's no negotiation that will bend it but now he says every time you think justice let mercy begin to speak watch this i really want you to get a revelation of this it will change your life every time the voice of judgment the voice of mess or of of justice begins to speak i will not fight it but remember that i not only paid the price i paid the price for everybody who will be an offender on this path are we together now when that happened a coronation happened in heaven we see that coronation the psalmist gave us a revelation and from philippians chapter 2 the bible says a name an office an identity was given to him in heaven to sit upon that throne are we together now and the bible says anything that has to do with man's redemption man's vindication must pass through him meaning a man is only condemned when he condemns that man a man is only justified when he justified the father put it in his office are we together watch what he did when he sat down on that throne he told man there is another dimension you do not know i know that i paid the price for you but i want to teach you another dimension we paid it in covenant listen you did not participate in anything but out of my love i took you and made it as though in me you were the one who paid that price so not only did he die for you you died in him are we together now so in christ every man's iniquity every man's um basis for accusation was nailed in christ paul saw this in galatians 2 20 and he said i have been crucified with christ nevertheless he said i live yet not i but christ is an exchange he died for me now i live in him in other words the day jesus christ dies there is no reason why i should be alive because we're in him so my life is no longer something i get outside of him my life is an overflow of what i have received from him and he so designed that from that point hence listen everything i derive will be because of him in him and with him my joy is because of him my prosperity is because of him please listen my peace is because of him so at no point in this kingdom would i be found leaning on my own strength because the moment i lean on my own strength the judgment of the law catches up with me the only basis for vindication is to be in him this is what he said he says he that abides in me and i abide in him he said the same will bear much fruit he said for without me the word without means outside of me and everything that i have done ye can do nothing the basis of the believer's victory 
is what Christ did on the cross. But not just what Christ did on the cross. Because that's what a lot of people say. Oh, I know what he did. No. Let's continue. John 3 verse 16. Please, give it to us so that we can finish up. It's not enough to know what Jesus did. That's not where I'm going tonight. This is the part that concerns you. That whosoever believes. Believes what? No, no, no. It didn't say that whosoever believes anything. There is a specific thing you have to believe to have life. You can believe Jesus is a prophet. It never gives life. You can believe Jesus is a healer. It doesn't give life. Are we together? He says, believe in him. Who is the him? Who is the him? No. You see, you see where we miss it? We have been believing in rubbish. Who is the him? Who? He said, God, no. Believing in God doesn't give you life. Who is the him? That's where I want us to get to tonight. You, you see that our confusion is the reason why we cannot manifest the reality of God's life. We believe, but what do you believe? Are we together? You can believe the shepherd. Believe me, you will not be saved. Believing in the shepherd does not bring salvation. Are we together? Believe in him. Who is him? The Bible, I love the way the Bible puts it. As many as believed in him. See that? Brothers and sisters, I am many things. And all of those dimensions can give you different operations of me. Are we together? A child believes a father. A worker believes a CEO. A Jimmy's daughter believes in her father. She doesn't believe in a CEO. We believe in a Jimmy Adegbeye. The multi-millionaire. That's what you believe. You will never get fatherly love from that dimension. Are we together now? You may get financial advice. You may get intelligence. You may get all of this. I believe in Professor Femi. You will get the intellectual dimension. There is a dimension of God you must believe to have life. Many of us have believed him as a healer. You can be healed and still go to hell. Please hear me. Many of us have believed him as a savior. You can have, I mean, you can have a, what do we call it, a, as a shepherd. What dimension of him have you believed? I will tell you now. Ready? There is a dimension of him you must believe to be saved. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What is Lord? The word Lord means a conqueror. Are we together now? Listen please. It's not just a savior like the one who died. He didn't resurrect as a savior. He died as a savior. He did not resurrect as a savior. He resurrected as Lord, a winner, a champion, one qualified to transfer what he has. And the Bible says, whoever believed that, listen, whoever believes in him, that name that was given, he said he shall not perish. The word perish there is not the word go to hell. Are we together? Because the Bible says, whoever does not believe is already condemned shall not perish here it is but have money but have the word everlasting is a wrong interpretation everybody has everlasting life everlasting life is life that does not end you, your life does not end you only change location to continue the living that's why we never say will you spend eternity you must spend it the question is where are we together now don't mind this my funny friend where will you spend eternity not will you spend you must spend it the word eternal life there is the word divine life is the 
Greek word zoe. I know you've heard it. Many of us quote it, but just listen. The word zoe, listen. Let me describe it for you. It's a life that does not want depend on any external impute for its sustenance. It's a life that has the capacity to reproduce anything it needs within itself. Are we together now? Like you do not have to source for anything. Within that system is self-sufficiency. Within that system is the ability to be any and everything. That life can become health. That life can become victory. That life can become wisdom. So when the Bible says we have life, it doesn't mean we just have a new way of breathing in and out. No. Something came upon you that all of a sudden translates you. Please, I want you to believe this. The Bible says the focus in the whole story is the believing part. Whoever believes in him, the Lord, who was a savior became a conqueror now sits as a king the father gave the son the son gave his life your job is to receive that life when you receive that life in reality the bible says certain things will begin to change you see the life is a programming the moment it enters you it deconstructs itself to different dimensions please listen the life of god is not just a big thing that comes up no 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 it is the life that begins to open you up to the mysteries of the kingdom it is the life you have received that begins to immune you from the activities of darkness many people have not received this life they want healing but they have rejected the life of god Many people have come out for altar call. Father, I, I, I'm, I'm born again. I believe in you. This and that. But they have not received it. He said, as many as received. Brothers and sisters, you can reject it. Many seated here have rejected it. I give you my ATM card. You refuse to collect it. You can reject it. Yet you need what only my ATM card will give you. You can borrow money from Pastor Lawrence. Borrow money from... Uh, a promise and so on and so forth and i say take my atm card the point is you don't just take it and hold it when you take the card something will make you turn behind and begin to read and follow you see the life of god is not how do i put it now it's not like something you just put in your pocket all right look at this i have this handkerchief so we say i have the life of god do you have it yes no that's not the idea of the life of god the idea of the life of God is like a programming. Something enters you and begins to walk in you. It is God who is at work in us to will and to do. So it's working. The moment the life enters you, it's like a genetic mutation. It starts altering your configuration. Are we together now? And the Holy Spirit is the custodian of that life. When he comes, he begins to open you up to the realities of the kingdom. All of a sudden, listen, because of that life, you are now spiritually alive. You can have the sensitivity to know that life was not supposed to be like this. Why am I always failing? You will never just know that ordinarily. It takes that life to open that awareness in you. Are we together now? It's like glasses. You all of a sudden start seeing life from another perspective. No. I'm not supposed to fail like this. I can't, I can't just be taking it like that again. Something must change. No, I've seen a trend in my family. People don't get married till they are 45. I'm noticing that something in my external environment is fighting the reality of that life. And the Bible says, he who has the son has eternal life. Zoe. God's kind of life. Now watch this. Although you have that life, it takes the ministry of the Holy Spirit, please listen, to open you up to the operation of that life so that you can receive the fullness of the benefits of that life. This is where a lot of people miss it. Oh, I have life. I have life. 
the same way you say I have a car the same way you say I have an ATM card can you use it I have given it to you do you know how to activate the operation of that life do you know how to make that life work in you we have been taught that it works automatically no sir no sir you can claim to have the life and still die of sickness now this is where satan's ministry comes the thief cometh not but to steal to kill if you don't have anything he doesn't come to steal are we together now satan comes his first ministry is deception what is deception painting an untrue picture and convincing you to believe it so you believe that i do not have this life if I truly had this life, I should not be sick. Are we together now? If I have this life, I should be doing exploits academically. If I have this life, now listen. Here is where the confusion has come in the body of Christ. There are those who are saying you have this life. There are those who are saying you don't have this life. You better fight your way into receiving it. Both of them are incomplete. On one side, you are seeing the supposed by faith you believe you know you acknowledge that that life is in you but then you are not seeing the difference the bible said should be produced are we together now this is the dilemma of many christians i gave my life to christ from the day i got born again my life has not changed it's been 10 years i will tell you why eternal life is being frustrated within you because you have not been taught how to release and activate the operation of the content of that life. It's like buying a phone. You admire it, you look at it, but you do not know how to work with it. That was the lamentation of the psalmist in Psalm 82 from verse 5. He says, they know not. Not they have not. They know not. Neither will they understand. He said they grow in darkness and so the foundations of the earth are out of course. The next verse says, Have I not said, ye are God and all of you are children of the Most High. He says, but you shall what? Die like mere men. Listen, please listen. An heir, as long as he is a child, does what? The Bible starts by calling him what? An heir, a partaker of an inheritance a partaker of a reality but it says as long as he's a child the word child here is devoid of strategy devoid of the ability to understand the operation of that process he said he differed not from a slave i can receive the life of god that contains health vitality prosperity and still be under a curse i tell you hear me brothers and sisters because we misunderstand the prophetic dimension of god's word therefore if any man be in christ he is a new creation but we do not know that the communications of god are twofold there is the prophetic communication of god speakings according to his realm of existence but there is the experiential manifestation of that prophetic word it is the nature of god to call things as though they already appear are we together now hebrews chapter 2 he put it very beautifully he said god had put all things under the subjection of man he said god did not leave anything left but he said as it is now we do not yet see all things are we together now so you have come to answer the altar call the life is in you but you went back and the exact same thing you know happens when a man is under a curse is happening to you now you went to a pastor and said pastor you said if i'm born again this thing will leave but you the person said yes is it not in your bible we're all ready together now you are born again brothers and sisters but the truth is if you will be sincere you are still seeing those traces as if nothing happened to you so it puts believers in a dilemma there are those who are saying keep believing that is gone one day it will go hey 
Wonder shall never end. If you have that kind of ideology, you are in for trouble. And then on the other hand, there are those who act as though they really have nothing. So they are trying. They live per day. We survive today. Let's see how the war of tomorrow will be. I know that there will be all kinds of things. Are we together now? So, although they read that there is victory in Christ, the truth is they don't believe it. They just know less fight per day. They are the ones who suspect everybody and everything. If Sam looks at you like this, is a sign that he's an enemy. So, they live their life with the consciousness of an aberrated perspective of warfare. And by warfare, they mean a consistent, never-ending contention. Both are wrong. Are we together? This is prophecy. But there is a place for the manifestation of prophecy. Jesus Christ has done everything he needs to do. But I have a role to play. Nobody gets saved just because Jesus died. You will go to hell. There is a response. Please listen. The idea of grace does not mean not participating. No. The idea of not participating in a process to call it grace is an aberration. Are we together? Uh-huh. The difference between grace and the law is what kind of participation. There is a participation that is unto the flesh. There is a participation that is a response of faith. That is the participation that brings results. Are we together now? So if the Bible says, by tithing you open your heavens. When I'm tithing, I'm not acting under the law. I'm not trying to do something. I am responding. There is a difference between doing something to gain righteousness. But in any case, there must be reception by faith. And that in itself is a participation. This looks very simple, but it's at the foundation of the lack of results and the miracles that many people are, are not receiving. I don't want us to waste this night and just get up and see people fall under the anointing and celebrate miracles and go back. I want you to live victorious. If all you think is healing, you will be frustrated. If all you think is on my own, think God's life and all its content is away. The life of God that can become any and everything. Any and everything. Christ has been made unto me through his life wisdom. He's been made unto me strength. He's been made unto me prosperity. That life is the word and as the word opens up it shows me the dimensions of its operation and then i look out first to believe number two to respond everybody say believe say respond this is your part as a believer you when you respond to what you do not believe is a waste of time so the Bible says, whoever believes in him, you receive. But that life begins to teach you certain things. And you respond to those teachings. Please listen to me. Part of what that life teaches you is that Satan is a trickster. He's a deceptive person. And he will not, just because you have life, leave you. The Bible says he left Jesus for a season. The next time he would come, he didn't come directly again. He came through Peter and Jesus said, I still detect you. And the devil says, do not, I mean, God said, do not be unaware, speaking through the apostle, of the devil's strategy. Are we listening to me, please? Because many people get up bragging. I'm not under any curse. I'm not under this. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the Lord. That's not a lie. But you have not learned how to participate in response to make that an experiential reality so you will still brag around and die like mere men are we together now i really believe in jesus christ 
and I really believe in his word. But I also believe in the principles that the revelation of his life releases. And my obsession is to always find out where is my part in this. Brothers and sisters, there is a part. There is a part that you have to play. Believing is not enough. Believing talks of conviction, persuasion about the truth of a person or a statement. But there must be a response. Your response is your action of faith. So the Bible says this in the book of Hebrews. There remained a rest, a Sabbath for the people of God. In spite of what Christ has done, there still remains a rest. And then it says, let us therefore labor. This is Paul in the New Testament. What is the idea of labor? Push God aside. No, let us find out our place of response. Let us therefore understand the operations of the kingdom so that we will know where our place of alignment is. And he says, whoever labors like that, there is a guarantee he will enter his rest. There is a way you will align that sickness will run away from your body. Believe me, it's not just by claiming. You will claim and be shocked. There is a way you respond. Remember during our time of fasting, we're showing you different mysteries. These are all the components that are called the life of God. Right? He gave you life. But it takes faith and it takes an operation of the spirit. So Satan has kept many people bound for two main reasons. One, they have rejected the life. And the solution to that is an altar call. I'm going to do that shortly before we start ministering. The second is he has kept people in delusion and ignorance. Never trivialize the role of deception in a man's destruction. Deception. The first deception is that you don't need to do anything again. Oh, brothers and sisters, hear me. I fear God. It's a big deception. As free as salvation claims to be, if you do not respond, you are going to hell. There is always a participation. That's what we call koinonia. Everybody say participation. If you will ever enjoy the healing dimension of God's life, there is a participation. If there will ever be prosperity, there is a participation. Now, the participation is a response of faith. God credits it at a response of faith, not an addition to what he has done. It's a compliment. So, he would see a sick body and say, your faith. You believe I am able to heal you. You were convinced based on the report you had. And now, I gave you an instruction. Waiting for your participation. You got up your faith. He calls it your faith. So, what is your faith? Faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction of God's word. Believing is not faith. No, 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 no. Believing is the first step to faith. You can believe without having faith. A believer is not a possessor. A believer who responds is a possessor. There are so many people, listen to me, who are trusting God for all kinds of things here. I'm teaching you how to get results tonight. God is not a herbalist. There is a participation. Ejimi, this is a gift for you. What is he supposed to do? Watch this, his response. Now, his standing up is a sign that he believes me. I can choose to hide it. Please sit down, sir. Sorry I'm using you. Hope, I'm sorry I'm just doing this game with your husband. Hallelujah. Ejimi, do you believe I'm having a phone? And that phone is for you. If you believe it, walk up to me. Faith. This is faith. The walking to me, although he has not seen it. So he's putting my integrity to the line. 
It's up to me to prove that I'm not lying. So I bring it out. If he comes to me, listen. If he comes to me and I say, ah, I'm playing. He believed. I'm the one who is a liar. And the Bible said, God looked for anybody who is greater than him. So that he will show you he's not playing games. Are we together now? Let's look at one scripture. Thank you, sir. Romans chapter 8, please. Romans chapter 8. Let's look at verse 35. Romans 8, 35. Just that one scripture. And then we'll take an altar call and begin to minister. Romans chapter 8. 35. Okay, give us from verse uh, 32. 32. Thank you. Everyone, please read. If you are a Christian, if you are a child of God, this is Good Friday. Well, even if you are not a child of God, read. I will soon make an altar call. One, two, read. He that spared not, stop. Who is the he now? God. He's trying to make a statement and he's tying the certainty of that statement to something he had done before. It's like saying, he that built this bridge in Kaduna and built it excellently is about to build something. So in case you doubt what I'm about to do, find out whether I did that thing or not. He's about to make a statement and he's saying, don't you dare doubt me for what I'm about to say. He that did not spare his what? Own son. But delivered him up. For who? What's the next statement? How shall he not with him also freely give us what? This is God speaking. He said, look at me. Your healing is a lesser thing. I gave Jesus. What is healing? I gave Jesus. What is witchcraft? If I did not, if I spared my son, then you will know that there are some things I can spare. But I carried my son. I gave him. And now I have gathered you to give you healing. And you are asking God, this my, this have been bleeding for six months non-stop. And God said, if I spared not Jesus, I will not spare anything. Whatever it will take me to prove myself, I will do it. If it means me killing somebody, I will do it. I, I gave my son. Who will I not be able to kill? Listen, this is the basis for conviction. So every time the devil is trying to say, look, 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 look. Will that prophecy work? Just remember Jesus. Jesus begged the father to have mercy. The father refused. So listen, Jesus said, father, reconsider. The father said, you are joking. Stay there. And now God is saying, I want to bless you. And the devil is saying, no. And Jesus is saying, God is saying, just believe me. And watch how I will do anything it takes. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Yeah. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Hallelujah. If the Father did not give Jesus. It's like a man listen it's like a man who vowed to punish every offender and he saw his wife and the guy said i'm a just person and he punished his wife then somebody throws a and say oh god you know we are nigerians what do you think he's going to do you say that's my wife inside the gutter i'm a military man this is my wife I paid the price for six months to get a yes from her. She's in that gutter. I don't know the consequence of my action. If you think I'm going to forgive you, listen, if it took God refusing to even give Jesus a chance for negotiation for your sake, then I assure you, whatever else it is that is holding you must leave you this night. 
Hallelujah. Do you believe me? We are going to pray and say, Lord, help my own belief. That, listen, listen, listen. That spirit that makes me keep wondering, can God do it? Listen, don't, don't make that foolish statement tonight. I, I was praying on the, tonight, before I came here, I was praying on the invitation card for my neighbor's wedding. If you know the story behind that dear woman, she shared it here, all kinds of things. When I met her, the devil was almost destroying her life. Had fibroid that was almost big like the size of a baby. She shared her testimony here. Supernaturally, that devil of fibroid came out the way a woman gives birth. It came out like that without surgery. And people were saying, ah, um, can you marry? Time has gone. Time has gone nonsense. I prayed for the card. And to the shame of the devil, we are dancing to the heavens on the 6th of May. <laughs> Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, your limitation is self-imposed. Satan is a deceiver. He comes to you and says, but can they really hear your voice? We are going to pray. The only prayer I want you to pray tonight is to challenge unbelief and say, Lord, I lift my faith. I'm ready to respond based on my conviction. Lift your voice and begin to pray. I have a part to play. I lift up that wall of unbelief. Please pray, pray. You are able. Are you praying? sense the anointing of the spirit i'd like you to mention everything that must live tonight listen please just follow these instructions i told you your response is where your faith is there are things that should go don't just keep quiet and watch them the bible says speak to the mountain open your mouth and begin to mention them don't keep quiet Mountain of financial hardship. Mountain of cancer. Mountain of mediocrity. Oh, you must go, you must go. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Say after me tonight, in the name of Jesus. The faith of God is at work in me. I have the faith to receive. I have the faith to believe. I have the faith to respond. Please listen. Do you know what happened in Acts chapter 4? Don't turn there. 
the bible says they went to a gate called beautiful please let me see now sir watch this it says they saw a man who had been there and he he, he called on them for arms and he thought they were going to give him arms peter and john and he, they said silver and gold have i none he said but such as i have listen listen i give unto you what did he have he said in the name of jesus rise up and walk the man was there sit down he was there. nothing happened why response did he believe peter yes did he get a miracle no why he, he could not respond and the bible says when peter saw him he said who taught you faith he held his hand and said respond 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 and the bible says peter held his hand and he leaping stood the power of god is released at the point of response not before never before at the point of response when i began to minister here the lord was speaking to my spirit who gave me a guarantee that the power of god will move but as i began to speak i put pressure it's left for him now to defend whether he really spoke to me or not god will not just get up and act listen it was god that put this miracle service you're leaving your house to come is enough response already are you listening to me you're going to say lord i put pressure on your integrity you ask us to come we have come lift your voice and pray don't be afraid of saying it pray lord you ask us to come you are the one who anointed this meeting to be a miracle service now oh god we are here on his integrity we have come oh God that you prove yourself shake it up shake it up we have come we have come hallelujah hallelujah now keep standing everybody before we continue there are people here i don't want you to waste your time and i don't want to waste your time there are people here inside and outside in all the overflows outside you are yet to make this decision the bible says this is the testimony that god has given us eternal life he said and that life is in his son he says he who has the son has that life please we're out of time we have very few minutes and there is a lot to do now wherever you are you are saying man of god i have heard your word i have been struggling with this thing but tonight i truly want to dedicate everything my all to jesus christ or you are saying man of god i have come out for an altar call before but for some reason honestly the pressures of life have pushed me and i need to make my way straight with the lord i'm tired of where i am those two categories of people inside and outside i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come out here right now god bless you quickly please i'll count just one to five if the holy ghost is speaking to you don't sit down thinking about it make your way very quickly one two run run like there's fire on the mountain especially those outside please you need to run run to jesus as you stand here please keep talking to him don't just stand looking at me god bless you run to jesus oh win that war win that war tonight this is an issue of your destiny koinonia can you appreciate them this is a harvest for the king of glory you're saying lord i'm tired of living my life my own way mismanaging my life on this Easter Friday, I give everything to you. Keep coming. You are saying, Lord, Easter Friday, you died. For God so loved me. 
he died for me i'm tired of living a life that is not worthy of my calling there are still people outside please run and catch up quickly quickly as the holy ghost is speaking to you and say join them make your way quickly you're saying lord i'm tired tired of habits tired of addictions run to the cross come running come running come running to the mercy seat keep coming hallelujah all of you in front in one minute i'd like you to talk to jesus christ please no smiling and pitching one another this is a serious issue please pray open your mouth by yourself and say lord i i come to you genuinely the lord is ministering to me that there are three ladies outside who should join them you wanted to go and one of your friends stopped you please friend be careful don't stand against anybody's salvation this night make your way to the front please and join them i'm seeing three ladies outside that the lord is calling one of you your friend was trying to stop you the devil is a liar please make your way to the front and then there are two others god is speaking to join them quickly before we start praying those of you in front here talk to your maker no man condemns you the blood declares mercy said no help me I'm not gonna let you go I'm not gonna let you sleep away You don't have to be afraid No man condemns you The mercy The mercy Look at me all of you in front some of you are crying i don't care what you have done this one decision remember jesus every time the devil tries to condemn you are you not the drunkard tell him the drunkard is that guy on the cross something is about to happen to you right now oh yes oh you slept with somebody before coming here you say well i don't know what you are talking about but i've been crucified with christ he looked at the woman he said where are thine accusers he said neither do i condemn you go and sin no more lift your right hand and experience the power of the blood the power of mercy you just sing there is a fountain filled with blood very softly as i pray for them hallelujah listen brothers and sisters jesus can change your life don't stand here just making an emotional decision to go back there is power in the blood of jesus say after me lord jesus from the depth of your heart say it again lord jesus i believe in you and this night i surrender everything my life my dreams my hopes my ambitions i surrender it to you i receive eternal life into my spirit i declare that from today i'm no longer a sinner i've been crucified with christ and i have his life right now jesus has paid the price i receive his life and i declare that i'm a new creation the old has gone i begin a new journey satan you no longer have any accusation against me i pray for you keep your hands lifted father on this good friday we present these souls as trophies to you this is a response to what jesus did oh receive these souls koinonia present these souls as trophies of victory trophies of victory this is the sacrifice 
the rewards of the sacrifice hallelujah I pray for you I declare that your sins are forgiven and the power of sin over your life is broken forever every guilt the devil uses I don't care what it is tonight the same way you wash a dirty cloth in fact the way you bring a new one that's how the pages of your life is he gives you a new beginning in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah a big congratulations to you in the name of Jesus now listen I want you to do this real fast so you will join us I'm about to minister to people now and we're going to be very very fast hallelujah I like you to follow the gentleman there are people all around they will lead you outside we want your information please you are born again now Christians don't tell lies make sure that you write your number you write your name just follow the instructions no fighting be patient until it gets to your turn they'll have your information and you quickly come back and join us in the service please do that as fast as possible so that um, you can participate fully in what is happening God bless you. Every other person begin to pray in the spirit. Rise up on your feet and begin to pray in the spirit. And say, Lord, my time for visitation is here. I won't give up. No, I won't give up. I'll keep pressing on. Till my answer comes. I won't give up. Lord, I won't give up. I'll keep holding on until my change comes. Lord, I won't give up. Lord, I won't give up. I'll keep holding on till my answer comes. I won't give up. Lord, I won't give up. I'll keep pressing on until my change comes. Please write your prayer request very quickly and submit them. Let's do it quickly, please. One minute, everybody. If you have the prayer request of, of I understand that Koinonia is being streamed live right now. Can we honor God for that? Yes. It's being streamed live. We appreciate the media for their creativity. And for all our online people, we love you. The same power that is working here is the same power that will work everywhere you are in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So please, quickly, quickly, please, your prayer request. Listen, for those of us who are just coming, I, I don't want you to think this is some ritual. Believe me, God answers prayers here. God gave us a revelation. Hallelujah. And the revelation was... The revelation of Hezekiah, hallelujah, when he took the threat letter and the Bible says he put it before the Lord and said, Lord, behold their threatenings. So please write it very quickly and then ushers, let's be very fast. Please help some people with papers next time, maybe from uh, maybe two or three months from now, we'll try to create expectation cards so that you can expectation cards leave her John leave her whatever she wants to do just let her do hallelujah we are going to pray please quickly your loved ones please make sure the online community participate there is a God that answers prayers here Remember, we spoke about faith. Those outside, ushers, help them. If I were you, I would begin to prophesy over my request. And say, I wrote you because you must live my life. Or you must come into my life.
Hallelujah. Now please begin to pass your request very quickly. Very quickly. Very quickly. My goodness. I tell you it's like a cloud that is heavy over this place. That's why I'm saying we should hurry up. We feel the rain of your love. We see the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear. See the rain of your love. Feel the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear. So let it rain. Let it rain. Would you open? Flood gates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the flood gates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the flood. Hallelujah. Please pass the prayer request very quickly. Once we start, we're just going to move. Um, let me encourage those who came with sick people or those who came for healing please make sure you get ready so that when it's time we'll just do that very very quickly hallelujah very quickly and then um, we'll be able to minister to people no matter what your condition is one of the things that we're going to be releasing today listen we had an encounter um we just returned from Ekiti state it's a lovely place and um, listen something really happened as they picked us from the airport in Elorin to Ekiti we passed a small village please listen a small village the border between Kwara state and Ekiti state and I saw one of the most miraculous things in my life I saw the obituaries of people listen 132 years 120 years it's like nobody died except they were 100 and something and in my mind i was saying guinness book of record has been lying to us for long and the, the interesting part of it listen is that the people they are not on glasses their dentitions are still exact they don't use crutches they are working firm one of them was a senior apostle that died last year 132 serving in the ministry alive and doing well when i saw those obituaries i said there must be a grace for longevity there, there is a covenant in this lineage that brings longevity and i told the guys i said when we're coming back we're stopping here you can trust me oh the law of honor as soon as we got there we stopped and we came out we went to the women they could not understand english please quickly with a request and we told them we said we are pastors we went to minister in equity and we are going back to the north but we discerned that there is a special anointing a strange grace for longevity and we want them to release upon us and then a lot of things happened that i may not say here and then they took us to one old man and the man just sat on his chair when we went they interpreted and they told him we came to receive that unction for longevity the man looked at us he said we should all kneel down and we got down on our knees and this guy began to pray and prophesy he's on record i'm sure maybe one of these days we we'll played he was in yoruba i didn't care what he was saying eh, Jimmy. all i know is that he was speaking a language and my spirit was receiving it this guy kept prophesying releasing that grace and that mantle upon that territory upon us i said that's right i knew that there's no mistake about this the moment we finished with him honored him so the seed into his life 
appreciated all the people we were on our way going back to the car and i felt in my spirit to go back and thank the women i went back to thank them and i saw a particular woman and they said this man 132 years this is his wife Ah. when they said that i said interpret for them that we came for and the woman looked at me they can bear me witness she just tapped me and said you follow her we followed her into a room she just opened the door and i saw pictures from one side to the other she started showing me the pictures i thought it was the wife of the man when he was in his old age you know like ketura that was the one and only woman he married that means that woman should be at least maybe 120 years or something alive these guys can bear me witness no glasses no crutches no nothing i said what kind of grace is this brothers and sisters there are mysteries you've heard me say this thing and when we finished before we finished talking we all got down on our knees and we told the woman she first started singing a song i don't know what it was i don't care what it was this woman spent like 10 minutes just letting it out from her spirit and do you know i was i don't know if i was sharing with them i felt as if they put a crown on my head that's how as i was feeling i knew i got this thing immediately she got it i told her i said let's snap i held her hands and we got to the place we'll show you the video and we snapped and i said i'm standing face to face with a woman 100 and something alive dentition complete can speak no glasses ah it was you i was thinking about i was happy to transport that grace brothers and sisters we brought it it must land on you tonight <laughs> hallelujah i i was just looking i was looking to empty everything i had i said what kind of grace is this we went to minister in a university called afe babalola university the man himself is 86 years alive and doing well in those regions if you are 80 years you are still a child believe me then when we were returning i saw the shock of my life 141 years one how many 41 i saw the obituary he just died 141 i said i got it let's see the devil that will manufacture himself from anywhere to come and take my life no see listen if you don't believe in transference of grace you will die young don't you ever think it was because of the food they are eating i didn't see any hospital around there i just saw a church and people is you can be 190 and not be able to talk but you are 141 the guy 132 was still serving as a man of god You are cooking by yourself and you died and left the wife the the mama tapped me in this place once you are 60 years you hold crutches what cause is that i always believed it but now that i've seen it ah there's that song that says my eyes have seen don't play it my eyes have seen it there are many strange things that will fall today listen if you care you can receive if you don't when we were coming we were in the plane and the plane was bouncing like a football i just remember that old woman i said plane you are joking i'm surrounded by too many mysteries please believe me hallelujah 86 years still a lecturer 89 years still a lecturer alive 100 and something years you see the women as if they are 50 something but some of them are in their 90s 80s hundreds that's grace brothers it's not about anybody praying for longevity there is an anointing that comes upon territories and tonight in the course of the meeting is when it's time to pray that please receive it we need to be alive to do a lot for the kingdom pray and say lord my spirit is open to receive everything you have for me
Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Why do we do this all the time? We do this because there are spirits, listen, that stand in the way of people's destinies. Don't think that deliverance is just something we do mechanically. I'm about to pray because there are people who came here. There are those who represent families, altars that have tied the destinies of men down. I'm going to pray. I tell you, I sense a heavy anointing. Please, the moment that happens, I like you not, don't just fall and stand up. Begin to pray and receive and reject everything that is not of God. Father, your word says upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. It says there shall be holiness. And it said the sons of Jacob shall receive their possessions. Therefore I pray, every spirit, every altar, every manipulation of darkness that is responsible for the tragedy in any man's life inside the first overflow second and third as you shout jesus like fire let it begin to land on people right now one two three i command those spirits right now right now my goodness my goodness inside outside like fire is coming upon people is coming upon people is coming upon people hallelujah the lord is giving me a very foolish instruction just lift your right hand that's what i hear right hand my goodness you don't need to shout just lift your right hand leave the drums just lift your right hand this don't mind me let me do my stupid thing the lord is giving me an instruction I see at least up to 33 people the lord is just saying i should stretch my hands the moment that happens i'm seeing like a stone being broken these are families altars in families lord according to your word right now at the count of three all the people and families involved i stretch my hands one two three let it happen right now right now right now right now right now just keep your right hand lifted. Sheba Babakata. Altars. 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 Right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Bring them out. Those strange altars. Strange altars. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. The Lord is saying He is visiting fertility issues fertility issues barrenness whatever it is lift your hands at the count of three as you shout jesus anyone connected to you or anyone here under a spell of infertility at the count of three be broken one two three break 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 right now right now right now infertility there are some ladies feeling fire fire around your stomach fire around your womb fire around your womb fire around your womb is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking shake it back at is breaking hallelujah please lift your hands the lord is speaking to me there are people here everything you touch dies in your hand lift your hands please no matter what it is if it's a relationship it dies Jakatarata, mandereto shota at the count of three let fire fall every cause of bad luck at the count of three shout jesus one two three go 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 
right now those altars those altars right now everything your hand touches dies people come around to help you and they leave you it's changing right now it's changing right now it's changing right now hallelujah sisters lift your hands any stranger that visits you in dreams lift your hands ay, 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 ay. speaking to you planting things the lord is giving this instruction every spirit husband just for ladies i tell you many people will be free right now at the count of three it's like fire that will fall on you lord let it fall every entity coming to oppress these people planting barrenness bad luck one two three take it take it take it take it let them go now inside and outside let them go now let them go now let them go now the kind of performance you have never seen receive it in the name of jesus shake the kappa shake rosata the kind of performance i pray from the depth of my heart the kind of performance you have never seen receive it in the name of jesus the grace for favor where you have labored and tried and it didn't work beginning from tonight step into a new dimension of favor step into a new dimension of favor every direction you have been praying and asking the lord to give you between now and next friday receive that direction receive that direction i want to pray for business people anyone in business lift your hands the strategy the strategy that you need to win in the name of jesus receive it right now may it appear to you in dreams in the name of jesus christ everything that has died in your hands i command it to come back alive in the name of jesus christ now i want to pray for you father that old baba prayed and released upon our lives the mantle of longevity 132 still alive i pray for you please receive it me too i received it from the depth of my heart lord you know that i wanted this not for self but for the house at 70 you are still standing strong at 90 you are still moving strong until you get to 120 no devil takes your life in the name of jesus hear me the force that immunes people from accidents comes upon your life right now the force that immunes people from terrorism and the wickedness it comes upon your life right now that spirit that kills people at the prime of their life when they labor and about to enter it takes their lives it leaves your life forever 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 
hallelujah may you see your children's children to the fifth generation believe what i'm saying i've seen human beings bodily carrying this revelation you step into it in the name of jesus therefore anyone here that death is eyeing that you will not see the next miracle service or you will not see the end of this year i don't know how the plan is going on in the realm of the spirit but i avert it right now i avert it right now the same way you will live long physically everything that is good in your life lives long with you your health lives long with you your wisdom lives long with you faithful lives long with you two prayer points quickly where you have been rejected you step into a place i've experienced it oh let me tell you something hallelujah i will never forget you know jimmy knows the story in 2007 i remember that time i went to collect a loan from a bank remember the story i went to collect a loan from the bank we had done everything and then when it was now time for them to give me the loan they embarrassed me i was humiliated the same people who were helping me it was as if a charm came upon them and i looked at that person and i vowed that till i die till i go to be with the lord i will not collect loan from anybody living or dead i made that determination from the depth of my heart i said lord if you cannot honor me let me die like that i pray for someone here see listen if doors are closing against you it's demonic don't ever say it's because i don't know so 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 bad. if if the person knew me it's a lie there is a mantle the bible says everyone loved esther who looked at her like a garment you can wear it i pray that honor that brings receptivity receive it right now oh come on your amen is not loud enough receive it right now hallelujah the bible says you shall be as a delightsome land you know what a delightsome land is well desired in other words at any point you are seen you are invited i don't know who has disqualified you but i pray for you they may use your background they may use whatever let grace qualify you tonight let grace qualify you tonight koinonia i pray for you honor that you have never seen in your life from even people who can give birth to you begin to receive it strange honor in high places strange honor in high places in the name of jesus wave your hands and give god all the praise thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus whatever you have started listen something just came in my heart whatever you have started that ended prematurely because this what i'm there is an anointing for what i'm telling you whatever you start i don't care what it is whether it is relationship or whatever and it ended but not by god we put life back to it right now i say it again whatever you started that ended but not by god by a manipulation of darkness it jacks back to life right now in the name of jesus hallelujah give god praise my goodness i wish we had time i wish we had time. dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord
grant me the discipline 